okay, imagine I'm a piece of chocolate and you want to put your hands all over it. <laughs> Do you not know how chocolate works? I don't think anyone who wrote this movie knows how chocolate works. No, I don't think they do. <laughs> Or I want a flash cut to the scene of her just being like, I'm sorry, I just had such a tough day. And she's just rubbing her hands back and like washing her hands yeah. with a Hershey bar. Yeah, she's here turning up to places with like chocolate covered hands like a toddler. It's like, sorry, I, just, I saw some chocolate I couldn't resist. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because it's too late to turn back now. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath's unable to join us this week, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm 11, Noah. That's how oh, I am. You? I'm 11 years Interesting. old. Interesting. Interesting. I am 126. <laughs> and we're also happy to welcome back our most imperturbable guest masochist. He's the host of Be Reasonable. He's the co-host of Skeptics with a K. He's the project director for the Good Thinking Society. And he's also Michael Marshall. Marsh, welcome back, sir. Hey, guys. Lovely to be here. I can't wait to, to do this show with you. And then I need to uh, just rotate around the room doing different podcasts with other people. I think that's what we <laughs> what we do around here is just slowly rotate yeah. from one, uh -huh. one to another. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let's put some uh, context on these jokes here. Uh, tell us, Marsh, what will we be breaking down today? Uh, so we watched God and Salsa. It is a story of a therapist, a suicidal teen and an ugly divorce Oh, and, and the therapist sometimes goes to a dance class, just sometimes. But it will literally never fucking matter in the nope, film never. that she not does once, that. Not even a sure little tiny bit. The fuck won't. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love post-tragedy redemption stories, but wish you could realize with a slow and creeping terror that this is a thinly veiled excuse for an abusive dad post his divorce... You will love yeah. this movie. Yeah. I would say the best twist of a movie I've seen in a really long <laughs> time. <laughs> so I, I have to offer a, a bit of a content warning up front because like this is a movie primarily, despite the name God and Salsa, this movie has nothing to do with God and Salsa is just completely, you know, whatever, fucking ancillary to the plot. It's really a movie about teen suicide. And... But for the random and consequenceless salsa scenes, that is all that it will ever be about. So we're left with the choice of either doing a very clinical and respectful description of the movie or making jokes about suicide. Now, we're going to try to keep it classy and stuff, but they're, they're, they're fucking jokes about suicide. So just, just, you know, we won't be offended if you skip this episode. We get it. Yeah, I will. I will personally be offended. <laughs> well, we won't tell. Then me I either. watch this for nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he skipped this episode, so the listeners can too. Is basically it. <laughs> go, God, please don't skip the episodes as often as he does. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> trying to destroy our listenership, Marsh. <laughs> Fuck, trying to feed my baby over here, you piece of shit. <laughs> All right, sir. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, so I've, I've, I've got to go best worth theme because yeah. this movie is basically God and spin the wheel. <laughs> salsa. It's, it's come up salsa. <laughs> like, this might as well be a production of Deity Plus Noun Studios. <laughs> sure. Yep. And I hope you realize the amount of restraint that I have that I didn't go with best worst jokes that I had to delete from my script because yeah. we won't get there. We would have got there, <laughs> but we won't anymore because those jokes are deleted. Yeah. <laughs> you and me both, Marsh. You and me both. <laughs> So I'm going to go with best worst scenes to transition straight to salsa dancing from. Yep. Because <laughs> again, this is a movie about suicide. So it'll constantly be like, and that's when my daughter took her life. And then the very oh, next boom. scene is down, 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 Every time. Without fail. Yes. And I am going to take best worst ages. I know some people watch these along with us. Uh, highly recommend you doing it when it comes to this one. As you do, just whenever a character appears on screen, just pause. Guess what age the movie thinks that character <laughs> is. <laughs> you will never be right in nope. any direction, mm, no not. matter what you're guessing. You'll never get it correct. All right. Stunning. <laughs> well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm wearing entirely the wrong shoes for a dance movie. So we're going to pause real quick while I swap them out. But we'll be back in a flash with all the randomly stitched together scenes that are God and Salsa. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. 
and then buy tortilla chips. Yeah, man, possibly. Hey, guys, uh, how's it going? Not great, man. Eli's on a 30-second radio delay. He is? Uh, why? I, I don't know. I, I guess I guess he just hasn't been feeling like his best self lately. Okay, no, I can understand that. Because when you're at your... Hi, Marsh. Hi. Yeah, when you're at your best, you can do great things. But sometimes life gets you bogged down and you might feel overwhelmed or like you're not showing up in the way that you really want to. Working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of you because when you feel empowered, you're more prepared to take everything life throws at you. Wait, I, I thought you had to be crazy to go to therapy. Not at all. And if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, why not try BetterHelp? It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Wow, that does sound good. Uh, where can I find out more? If you want to get closer to the best version of yourself, therapy can help. Visit betterhelp.com slash awful today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash awful. Wow, thanks, Marsh. What's better help? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, one, excuse, two. excuse me, everybody. Could I, could I have your attention, please? Uh, sure, Jess Thomas and the writer and producer of this film. Uh, what's up? Uh, well, I, I just I hate to interrupt our salsa class, but how would you guys like to be in a movie? And all of us? Yep. Uh, I mean, sure. W what's it about? Well, I'm so glad you asked. It's about a hardworking family therapist who meets a man whose evil and vindictive wife is trying to drive his children away from him. And throughout the course of the movie, we learn that he's actually just a really good dude trying to do the right thing. And his ex-wife is a total bitch. Okay, but um, yeah, sorry. How are we involved in that? Yeah, we're, we're a salsa dancing group. Yeah. What, right. Well, in the movie, the therapist discovers salsa as a way to deal with the tremendous emotional toll it takes on her to watch a great guy who didn't do anything wrong be lied about by his fucking bitch of an ex-wife who's also fat. Okay, okay, okay. A lot of venom there. A lot Swearing of venom there. Um, sorry, Jess. Jess, isn't your wife an ex-family therapist? Yeah, y yes, she is. And um, didn't she find salsa during a difficult time in her life? She did, yes. And I'm not worried at all that people might find this film a horrifying but thinly veiled attempt at retelling the story of your divorce. N no, no, I am not worried about that. Oh, then we're in then, yeah. Yeah, totally. I hate my ex-wife. We know, man. We know. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown and we're going to open up on a teenage girl's suicide note so sorry if you were hoping we'd be able to ease you into it but uh yeah we get that we get some credits that like have the same production quality as the automated photo collages that my phone makes of my cats oh god yeah absolutely it's sub eye movie level of title credits mm -hmm. like the video from my grandparents wedding anniversary had higher production values than yeah. these credits mm -hmm. also the logo is god and salsa god and salsa llc and i mm -hmm. misread that as two separate things like they were claiming god as exec producer which i thought was very bold of them. <laughs> See, I was just excited that they created an LLC for this thing. They were like, they were ready for an industry to grow out of this yeah. movie. Merch, <laughs> sequels. So yeah, so we're watching this mom and like we get the voiceover of this suicide note from her teen daughter and she's like, you know, devastated and everything. There's this moment we have to see her like lose her religion. So she has to take off her cross necklace and throw it across the room. But it has like a like a tiny little lobster claw on the back of it. And she has to like undo that. And there's like a long moment where she's like, oh, God damn it. I thought I had it. Is Can't it not quite get it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> Hard to dramatically toss something across the room while you're also trying not to break your big clunky costume jewelry, too. So <laughs> right. Like, eh, gently set it, it is, down. It is huge. This, this cross is so large that Flavor Flav would look at it and think, ah, that's a bit much. That's a bit <laughs> much. Come on. <laughs> also, can I talk about this daughter's suicide note? Sure. Mm. She opens with don't blame yourself, but the rest of the suicide note is like, okay, but honestly, it's your divorce. That but here's why it's your I fault. Just, yeah, I exactly. just want to be clear. I've made a list of all the reasons I'm killing myself. And you see, I've, I've actually put your initials next to the ones that are your fault. And dad's <laughs> oh, initials Jesus next to the ones that are mine. But like, no, don't blame yourself. I just know that's uh, supposed to go in the note. 
So, okay, so then we cut over to this kid, Shane. He's going to be one of our main characters. We meet him. He's a punk. He's vaping. That's how we know he's a punk. He's vaping and wearing a hoodie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's leather jacket, hoodie, and vaping. And I thought, I wrote in my notes, could this character be any more of a Christian movie bad boy? And the answer was yes. He's wearing ripped jeans as well. So he's taking all of the boxes. Yeah. Yeah. So he's coming into his house. Mom and dad are scream fighting. They're having one of these weird, like, taking turns being the angry one fights. (laughs) Did they have the same script? I felt like they had two different versions of the mom dad fight script, but they didn't figure it out until they were already rolling. <laughs> right? Because oh, yeah. she'll be like, You bastard, this is so like you. And he'd be like, Why would you say that right now? And you're just like, Oh, almost related to the same yeah, conversation. Uh-huh. Yeah, this fight is so confusing. It sounds like you're stood too close to two NPCs in a game and they're both cycling through their dialogue <laughs> options at the same time. Or have you ever been like, there's two people and they're both on the phone, but you don't realize that right away because they're facing away from you kind of a yeah. thing. And just for a second, it lines up. Yeah, one of those type of situations. But they're fighting. They hate each other. Mom wants a divorce. Little sister's very upset by all the yelling. And this is where the mom says to him, don't you walk away from me? And then says the same thing again immediately afterwards. Mm-hmm. So we know that this movie had retake money, but they kept both lines in. So they didn't have retake and then cut the worst one money. No. So that's what we found the exact line that they had here. Yeah, we found exactly where the budget is. A, a great example of how incongruous the script is. The dad says at one point, if I'm a horrible husband and father, what does that make you? And she replies, not in a million years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's so dumb. And then we cut temporarily away from that. We see the the lady from before with the with the suicidal daughter. This is Raquel. She's going to be our main character. And she's watching TV all sad late one night when a commercial comes on for salsa, for like a dance class for salsa, not like dip. <laughs> and it's, it's very weird to cut because it says, you know, late night movie classics will return. And then it cuts to this salsa thing. And it's, it's a really jaunty salsa. And it's a, a really weird transition. And it's sort of like Schindler's List will be right back after these messages. I think they're just weaning us onto that since that's going to be such a big part of the movie. I was going to say, little did we know that would be a theme of the film. <laughs> yeah. And, uh-huh. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Did you guys feel like this is a thing Heath would do? Because I super pictured Heath day drunk, 4.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> Our salsa. Our <laughs> taste is salsa. There's an unused salsa class coupon on Heath's desk right now that he's think. resting coffee cups and mics on. I feel like you and I know a different Heath if you think that's something <laughs> Heath would do. We, she also watches the entirety of the ad before she turns the TV off completely in disgust. And it's like, but now you'll never find what happens to the little girl in the red dress. You've completely yeah. <laughs> missed... <laughs> So, but meanwhile, back at the fighty house, dad comes into the kid's room and he's like, hey, you know, I'm leaving. Mom and I are getting divorced, but I still love you. And mom comes in and she's like, enough of this still loving our children shit. Leave. (laughs) Now, this is where we're really going to dig into the main theme of this movie, which is that the dad is a perfectly good guy who's a good person and did nothing wrong. And the mom is terrible and evil in every possible fucking way. And anything you've heard to the contrary is a lie that she brainwashed the children into believing. Yep. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Woody Allen and all those other innocent (laughs) victims of brainwashing. I expected her to make a coat out of Dalmatians at any minute in this movie. (laughs) She was fucking awful. But dad, mom throws a drink in in his face as he's going. He's like, okay, fine, I'll leave. And she throws a big drink in his face. Okay, let let me clarify the timing here. He goes, okay, I'll leave. Because this actor is very clearly bracing to have a drink thrown in his face. Yes, Yes. yeah, absolutely. (laughs) And then she throws the drink in his face. And I joked in my notes, oh, I really want the next shot to be her holding a full glass of liquor still. And it was, it (laughs) It literally was. 100% The the glass isn't empty even after she throws it at him. It's like this one can just refill glasses at whim. So, and and we should point out two things about this, the, the actor that plays the dad. First of all, Generally, the acting in this movie is not terrible. It's it's medium, except the dad who is fucking awful and the younger mm. sister who's a kid. And so I'm going to give her a pass. But like, well, I'm not going to give her a pass, but I'll give her more of a pass than the dad. <laughs> 
And the other thing is, is that he's allergic to the top five buttons on all shirts. Correct. Oh, it's yes. driving me mad throughout this film. <laughs> the amount of this guy's chest that we see is disturbing. His nipples star in this film more often than he does. It's, yeah. it's ridiculous. <laughs> there are more clothed people in Girls Gone Wild VHSs <laughs> from the late 90s yes. than dad is. Also, in case you're wondering how these actors were all gathered together, it's pretty simple. They go to salsa class with the guy who wrote and directed this film. It is the only thing all these people have in common. Okay. Is that, is that genuinely true? 100% true. I, so I was like, how the fuck did this movie get made? So I did some Marsh level deep dive research. <laughs> I was on people's Facebooks and I realized <laughs> this dude just was at salsa class one night and he was like, I have all the casts I need right here because the only thing all these people have in common across their various levels of acting experience is they all train in salsa at the exact same studio in LA. Amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> All right, so then we we doodly do back to Raquel's childhood. I should point out she's not part of this family that's fighting, right? Like uh, that's got, in case that's confusing, she's someone else that's going to get layered into this story later. But we cut to her like a flashback of her when she was a kid in El Salvador, and she's walking to school with a nun, but a bomb goes off, and that's pretty much all we get of that flashback now. But we're going to check back in on it later. And then we get Raquel, like modern day Raquel, getting home alcoholically. Mm-hmm. Right, but it's it's Christian movie alcoholic. So yeah. it's bad because she's she's bought a bottle of wine, even though she's clearly alcoholic because she's got two other open bottles of wine behind her that she's mm-hmm. put stoppers in because she's had a glass out of each of them. But they're still sort of three quarters full. But it's bad because she's now got three <laughs> bottles of almost full bottles of wine and he's therefore an alcoholic. (laughs) Yeah, you know, classic binge drinking where you have a single glass of wine once a day. Yeah. Like, the Christian movie makers realise that the biggest problem with alcoholism isn't the amount of booze that you buy, it's the amount that you consume. (laughs) Right. They're not addicted to the purchasing of alcohol. That isn't the issue here. It's not a hoarding kind of thing. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Walk into a wine shop and they're like, oh my God, you have a problem. You have such a problem. <laughs> so, so she checks her fucking answering machine because apparently sometimes it's 1983 in this movie, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. So she checks her answering machine and she's got a phone call from some lady at her church. So apparently she hasn't been back to church since she threw away that cross necklace in the opening of the film. And this lady's trying to talk her into coming back. She's like, hey, I texted you a video of Pastor John giving this great sermon on on grief. I thought maybe you could listen to it 45 seconds at a time, like littered throughout the re- remainder of the film, huh? <laughs> yeah. How does that sound? Do you want to listen to a sentence and a half of it at a time for the next two fucking hours? <laughs> <laughs> also, I feel like if you call someone whose kid just died and your main message is so... Haven't seen you in church for a while. You're the bad guy. 100%. You know why you haven't seen her in church for a while. Relax, okay? You're starting to make it look like our religion doesn't work and uh, <laughs> really like it if you'd stop. You know, there's there's two directions you can go about religion after a tragic loss and it seems like you're going the one that doesn't give us 10% of your income yeah. in your life. So <laughs> would you mind? Right. And so and and the so she starts playing the pastor sermon, right? And the pastor's like, you know, sometimes it seems like there's no loving God out there at all. Sometimes, in fact, your entire life and all of its specifics will be irreconcilable with the claim that there is a loving God. <laughs> Whew, that's a tough start. That's a tough start. You want to pause this and maybe pick it up later in the movie? <laughs> well, I mean, he's got a great answer, though, Noah, right? Which is. Oh, right. How come the baby doesn't take a moment to be grateful about the candy in the first place? Oh, see, I thought you were going to talk about the turn, turn, turn lyrics that he oh, had. No, oh, of course. No, yeah, we've got, obviously we've got the Ecclesiastes that people think, oh, God, why do people think this Ecclesiastes passage is good? It's literally just time exists. Yes. <laughs> There's nothing poetic. <laughs> There's a time for hats and a time for boots. A t- my, like my son's super simple songs we listen to in the car do better <laughs> philosophical work than Ecclesiastes. No, I'm talking about the part where he, instead of doing the take candy from a baby part, he's like, well, you know, maybe we should focus on the joy of a baby that had candy to begin with. And I'm like, 
I feel like you haven't really focused in on what the expression taking candy from a baby means. (laughs) 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 So... and that's the thing on that Ecclesiastes court, you know, there's a time to weep, but then there's a time to dance. And it's like, right, but we've got no idea of the passage of time in this film, but it does feel like she's still in that whole time to weep because my kid's dead. Time. Yes. That seems like a very reasonable thing for her to still be doing right now. Right. But, but based on that, she's like, uh, based on the strength of a time to weep and a time to dance, she goes to that dance class that she saw the ad for. She might as well say out loud, well, I have been weeping. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so she goes to this dance class. They have COVID protocols to get in. They check her temperature, right? So, you know, they're they're yeah. responsible. I'm so glad they didn't delay the making of God and Salsa because of the COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> you know, we lost so much to COVID and I'm so glad we didn't slow down the production <laughs> of God and fucking Salsa. <laughs> And it, it, in fairness, we don't know that they're checking her temperature. We just know that they've like bipped her forehead. Mm-hmm. I think they're checking for a sign of the beast. Like, oh, not okay. negative, yeah, that's you're allowed. Possible, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. All right. So, <laughs> so, yeah, so we go into this salsa club. This is the first time we see salsa. Now, I want to, there's two people who are salsaing in this class that I want to single out. One is old white lady who's not really trying, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. And <laughs> yeah. she's she's awesome, but the best is, gigantic lurch guy. He's huge. Gigantic lurch guy's the fucking best. Yeah. I want gigantic lurch guy's salsa movie. This guy is like seven foot two and hefty. Yep. Right? He's just this gigantic guy and he's standing there among the small people like fucking Gandalf visiting the hobbits or some shit and doing salsa with everybody. It's oh yeah. He, he is 100% false perspective. That's the only way they can have him in this <laughs> yeah. film with two false, false perspectives. And no one in this movie will ever acknowledge it. He's a background extra. Yeah. He doesn't have any spoken lines. He'll just be in the background and no one at any point just turns around and goes, ah! sorry, what the fuck? <laughs> Are you two people standing on each other's shoulders? <laughs> so, but yeah, so but she sees that and she's like, oh, I that guy's too tall. This is scary. So she goes to leave and the instructor stops her and he goes, hey, you're not going to get out that easy now. Hey, can I just throw this out of here? Nobody's ever sounded charming or cool when they say that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just all remove it from our vocabs, everybody. And this is where the instructor starts just like randomly insulting other people who are there, saying how terrible they all are. And it's like, you're very relaxed about disparaging your clientele for a guy wearing a jawline mic right now. <laughs> You've got no discipline. <laughs> jawline mic. Marsh at QED and this salsa instructor yeah. have the same <laughs> and equipment loadout. Spears, yes. And he's, yeah, he's like, he's like, yeah, you can't possibly be worse than my shitty students. <laughs> like, well, that makes you a yep. bad teacher, though, doesn't it? <laughs> Aren't you insulting yourself? He also says a sentence that I think about so much. He says, and I wrote it down exactly, dancing is like therapy. It's really hard to learn and a great workout. And I wrote in my notes, I don't think anyone associated with this movie has been to therapy. Absolutely. Because, <laughs> he's yeah, it's like dancing is like therapy in that more straight men will aggressively avoid it all, at all costs, even though they would actively benefit from the whole experience. <laughs> yeah. But he says, you know, it's, it's, there you go, it's much better. Dancing's like therapy. It's best when you're not thinking about it. It's like, is the key to therapy not thinking about stuff that's happened? It feels like thinking about stuff that's happened is the therapy. It's kind of the point. Of therapy, yeah, is that, yeah. But you do, yeah. So, okay. So now we got to go check back in with Shane, the punk kid. The punk kid who, by the way, the, the actor is like 31 or whatever. And and dad is there to pick him up. This is divorced dad. He's half an hour late. Mom is furious and the kids don't want to go with him because mom has poisoned their minds against him. But but only because mom poisoned her mind. He's late because he stopped to help a puppy. There was a blame <laughs> puppy, a two-legged, not even three, two-legged puppy. And uh, also, if you look at this photo of the angle from this photo, you can see I only clipped that little old lady in her minivan <laughs> on the way over. God. And the kids are like, yeah, we don't want to go with you. So he leaves and mom's like, I think he hit that old lady head on with his minivan, actually, <laughs> probably to sacrifice her for the devil or something. You know, and the kids are like, yeah, mom. Mm-hmm. And then Shane goes back into his room and scream punches his bed for a bit. 
Oh, and he's got the saddest little bed. His bed yes. is like as wide as my left thigh. His comforter <laughs> is the blanket that I give to my cat. It's just he lives a very poor existence. I wanted to watch this actor mime sleeping in this bed so hard. Just climbing into <laughs> this fucking dollhouse bed. All right. Yeah. Here I It's one of those, those beds that you can't so much like turn over in. You have to like rotate like you're on a spit. Otherwise you will fall out. <laughs> yeah. No, this, this right. is, there's only one t- reason you ever end up in this bed. And it is because you or your wife thought staying in an Airbnb will be fun. And then you realize <laughs> why hotels exist as you and your wife desperately fight for retail real estate in this tiny ass bed. Yeah. No, yeah. you wouldn't understand. You can't understand the joke. <laughs> the rest of us would. So yeah, but so we he scream punches the bed. We cut very quickly to Raquel arguing with God from her living room. Yeah. Right? About like daring him to exist, I guess, or something. She's yelling at him, like, where were you? And I because we'd last seen her at the salsa class, I thought she'd like arranged to meet him there. It took me a moment to be like, oh no, wait, wait. You mean dead kid. Gotcha. Sorry. No, no, yes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so. But then we cut back over to the divorced family and mom comes in and finds that Shane has overdosed on pills. Altoids. <laughs> Are they pills? Because it looks like he's overdosed on the bag of spare buttons that you get with a fancy shirt. That's yeah. What that looks like. yeah, he might as well have like an open sewing kit next to him. Just, eh. <laughs> I wrote my notes at this point. Man, the kids in this movie are dropping like flies. We gotta <laughs> put up a fence around the younger sister. She hasn't had a lot of lines yet. And then, so yeah, so he overdoses, and we cut immediately from mom going, Shane, Shane, are you even alive? To dan, 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 dan. It's yep, a bunch yeah. of more fucking salsa dancing. Like, He's dead. Cha cha cha. Hey, guys, for our salsa class that we're going to cut to throughout the movie, should we get some attractive people or should we continue to hire the legions of undead that we raised with our (laughs) wizard friend (laughs) earlier and the giant that we'll never acknowledge, the fucking (laughs) tree ant, the unacknowledged tree ant in the center? No, we're going to go with the legions of the undead. Everyone... Everyone you look at in this bag or truly take a moment when there's a group scene, pause. Everyone, you're like, oh, that's a normal human. And then there's a thing wrong, right? It'll be like, does that person have a foot growing out of their forehead? Like everyone's got one thing. And the thing is, we, we watched this trying to find Raquel, the, the, the mum in here. And I don't know whether it was just me. I struggled to find her in this fairly sparse crowd of dancing people. I kept thinking she was one of them and then it turns around it wasn't her. Like that scene in, in Kill Bill where it all goes to black and white and then you think she's been stabbed and it's not, they've changed and you couldn't quite t- tell it wasn't her. So it made me wonder because I couldn't look here to while they were all moving. Am I like an anti-T-Rex where my vision is based on a lack of movement? Huh, you know, stillness. Because like, <laughs> like the dinosaurs can't see us while we're salsa dancing would have been a fantastic addition to the Jurassic Park <laughs> canon. Just <a> yes. <laughs> element of that film. And can I say a lot less silly than a lot of the stuff from the Chris Pine movies. So, you know, yeah, win no, win for everybody. That's true. I just, they show so much dancing for no reason in this movie. I wrote in my notes at this point, this is the movie version of my mom going, that looks fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't that look fun? <laughs> huh? Yeah, we looked, we listened to so much. First of all, like this guy is constantly giving him instructions that don't really mean anything. Shut the door. Remember to shut the door. I don't know what he means by shut the door. And what I really hope is he's never explained it. He just keeps saying it to him. <laughs> and they're like, he's telling me to shut the door. What the hell could that possibly mean? I keep thinking to myself, I I would need more instruction than this. Yeah, he's, he's repeating it so often it feels like it's the move she's going to need to do to win the big salsa competition in the final act. Like, oh my God, right. she's going to have to shut the door. Like right. Zoolander she, turning left. She shuts the door and sweeps the leg. <laughs> that's the, and, yeah, yeah, that's the crazy Kicks Mr. Miyagi's ass. Movie, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> All right. So then we cut straight to the hospital where Shane is being held for observation following his overdose, right? And the doctor is trying to explain to the mom, hey, your kid's suicidal. We're going to need to get him into therapy before you can have him back. And the mom is like, no, gross. <laughs> right. And when we see Shane in the hospital here, I'm fairly certain he only did the whole suicide attempt. So he got to lie down in a bigger bed than they were. <laughs> right. The he, he just wanted to stretch out for, yeah. a, for a night or so. The roll on his side. Yeah. Also, can we talk about Dr. Santa? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can. Look, everyone in their life. I know I have it. And I'm sure you guys have it, too knows an older, perfectly nice gentleman who's decided to go with weird fucking facial hair that makes him look like a Santa cowboy from the year 1700. Yes. We all know that guy. <laughs> Nicotinatic Santa, yes. But you can't just put him in your movie and not acknowledge it. 
right? You got to be like, hey, man, you look like a cowboy time traveler, but I guess you're a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> And this is where they, the, the doctor's saying about how we ha we had to put him on emergency antidepressants, which I, I didn't know that emergency rooms put you on to like antidepressants stat <laughs> on the on the day that you get uh, admitted. But he says, well, you know, a patient on this ward killed themselves using the plastic bag, like the plastic liner from the bin. So, right, but how did that not result in a no liners in the bins policy for the entire ward then? That right. seems like that's the first step you do. Right, because they're in the room with the suicidal kid and he like reaches down and he says, do you know your kid could kill himself using nothing but this? And then we're like, well, why is that in the fucking room? <laughs> yeah, like, Shane. And if he didn't know that, he knows now. Shane, are you listening? <laughs> I, I saw your acting earlier and I just want you to know that you could kill yourself oh, with <laughs> this trash can bag. And then, you know, just uh, keep it in mind, Shane. I'm Dr. Santa. Yeah, but mom seems to think that the doctor's a little too worried about her son's overdose. Yes. Yeah. She's like, I'll be taking him home today. I need to repot him in new soil. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor's like, you you know suicide can be fatal, right? If it's not treated. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. She goes, I'm his mother. And I wrote in my notes, and you're doing an absolutely slamma jamma job. Yeah, lady. Like, there's <laughs> no reason to leave this up to professionals. <laughs> Nothing but net. So, okay. So then we, we cut to Raquel and she's walking into the Fulfilled Heart and Mind Therapy Center. Now, we all assumed she was going to get therapy, but this is where we learn in the movie that she is a therapist. Right. And she's meant to be going back to work now. And, and But how long is it meant to have been since her daughter died for her to be going back to work as a therapist? Because I've got no idea. There is no time frame in this entire film. But she's expected back at work. But because it's America, the answer could be anything from like a month or a week to like mm -hmm. a day. I have mm -hmm. no idea. I have nothing no, to right. Yeah, no. <laughs> it also depends on the states. If she's in like Minnesota or Florida, I think they give you like 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so she goes in and, and we see the divorced dad is in the waiting room. So like we're teased that this is all about to tie together. But then she goes in to talk to her boss and tell him that she's, you know, she's not sure if she can fulfill hearts and minds anymore. After everything that happened, right? And this this guy could not be more cavalier. He is supposed to be the head of a mental health practice. And he's like, eh, give it a week. You'll get over it. What was she like, 15? Yeah, you barely know those kids. They're kind of jerks <laughs> at that age, right? <laughs> what you need is to get back on your feet. Just immediately delivering mental health care to a stranger. Trust me, once you get in there, right, you'll be fine. Yeah, you got to get right back on that horse even while your spine's still broken. That's how we learn. That's how how it works. <laughs> right, because, yeah, at that exact moment, right, she's like, I, I don't think I could do this anymore. I'm going to need at least a little more time. And he's like, take all the time you need, except there's a guy in the waiting room and, you know, Lisa's on her 15, so can you take him and <laughs> then take more time? <laughs> So she takes the divorce dad, that's Matt. She takes him back and she's like, all right, yeah, no, I'll therapy a little bit. Turns out that he's there because he wants her to therapy his suicidal son. Yes. And she's like, what brings you here, Matt? And he's like, well, I've got this aversion to buttoning up my fucking shirt. <laughs> <laughs> my shirt buttons are so low, you can see my penis. And I don't know how that happens. That's not meant to even be a thing, but somehow it's done. I'm somehow in Scrooge pajamas, but indecently. I don't really know how this is working. <laughs> And throughout this whole scene as well, because he's, he's a bad actor, he's trying to portray agitated. He is shaking so much. He's basically, he looks like a white lady trying to blame Pfizer. That's how much this <laughs> yeah. guy is. Yeah. yeah. Also, this actor, well, he heard what I said about him in the earlier scenes about how bad he is. And he was like, Shh, I'm going to show Eli because I happen to know that good acting is yelling randomly. <laughs> so I'll occasionally... <laughs> And then it's very, it's always after the cut, he stops doing it, which means that what is happening is he's going, my son, Dr. Gums, up, cut. And then Jess Thomas is like, hey, man, you fucking suck. Stop yelling randomly. And so, like, okay, okay. <laughs> anyway, so I was thinking that maybe you could be his <laughs> It is. <Cut. laughs> he's amazing. Yeah, he's so fucking bad. And, and it's, he explains, like, he's like, hey, you know, I wanted you to be my son's therapist, but my ex-wife wanted a different guy. And so the judge decided to randomly pick a therapist. And wouldn't you know it, he picked you. Yeah, that is that is not random. That is not, not random. Not the random. opposite of random. <laughs> yeah. So, and the thing is, I, I love this. The judge picked a therapist randomly. You know, on the downside, they were not at all qualified to help change suicidal tendencies. But on the plus side, they did say they turned him straight. So, you know, that's a, that's a win-win. <laughs> 
Yeah, but she's like, but why do you want me? And he gives this big fucking no atheist in a foxhole speech. Yeah, I don't understand why Christians think this is a good argument, right? People tend to believe our ontological position when they're at their most afraid. Not as good an argument as you think. <laughs> right, exactly. Also, the thing is, there are no atheists in foxholes is somehow a misunderstanding both of atheists and foxes. <laughs> yeah, right. What about foxes, damn it? <laughs> but I thought, he's bringing up foxholes. Has he been to war? And is that why he keeps shouting like that? Has oh, he got okay. shell shock? Is that his character? Oh. That would also explain why he's always wearing that facial expression like he's trying to explain all that hand-drawn Marge Simpson porn of his that you just <laughs> found, right? But yeah, but he's but basically what he's telling her is like, I want you to be my son's therapist because you're the correct religion, right? Oh, see, see, I thought it was the thing that he brings up next, which is that mm. I know your kid died of suicide. Well, that yes. too, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, you've got to be the right. Who better to handle my son's suicide attempt than a mother who is still freshly grieving for her dead daughter who hasn't hasn't even yet returned to work? You know, other than literally any other therapist, Pretty including much, that yeah. conversion <laughs> therapist from before, they would still be better than her at this point. <laughs> yeah, and just, it's weird that he pitches this because he kind of sort of is like, huh? It's like a... Like a second try at saving your kid. Wouldn't that be right? fun? It's like a do-over? Yeah. You want a mulligan? Uh, you could you could get it right this. I mean, not that you got it wrong. I mean, I read the note. You <laughs> oh, got it Jesus wrong. Christ. She was very clear. He, he's doing it like she's joined the team. He's assembling for a heist. Like, Matt, you son of a bitch, I'm in. That's well, kind right. of what the tone he's going for here. Yeah, no, because she, she's like, no, I can't help you. And then he leaves. And But by the time he gets to the parking lot, she calls. And she's like, yeah, I'm in for one last job. So, okay, so so Monica, that's the divorced mom. She's driving Shane home from the hospital now. Yeah, and she's like, Shane, Shane, your suicide attempt is making me look bad. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so, so Monica is to Shane being a suicidal as my mom is to me being an atheist, right? She's yeah. Like, Can you believe that doctor thinking that you were trying to commit suicide <laughs> when you took all of those fentanyl? Meanwhile, Shane's trying to hang himself off that little thing you hold your hand on to. <laughs> like, Shane, pay attention. <laughs> Also, this is where we get to watch this actress try out several pronunciations of fentanyl and get none of them right. No, she gives Absolutely, up eventually yeah. and moves. <laughs> yes, fa 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 you took fentanyl, you took fant fentanyl, fentanyl, fentanyl. <laughs> eventually, it's that shitty European orange soda. Fanta? Did you take Fanta? <laughs> Yeah, she's like, but don't worry. I know that you can't be suicidal. You have too nice of a car. I blame your dad. Yeah. <laughs> and then she grounds him. He's grounded for trying to kill yep. himself. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, okay. So then we cut over to uh, Raquel meeting with Monica about the therapy for, for Shane, right? So apparently she wants to do therapy for the whole family. She wants to talk to, to Matt, the dad, Monica, the mom, Shane, the son, and Amanda, the daughter. By the way, that character will get a name about an hour and 20 minutes into the movie, but I'll just go ahead and tell you, the, the younger sister is Amanda. The little girl on Thorazine the entire film? Yeah. Uh, yeah she, she's not, on the strength of her personality so far, she's not going to get a lot out of that interaction. That is going to be a very weak bit of therapy. <laughs> this That little girl's performance is so dead-eyed that in the early scenes of the movie, I wrote... Man, what a really like in insensitive portrayal of a disabled person this actress is doing. Mm. Nope, that little girl is just in a fucking fugue state yep. throughout her acting performance. Yeah. And so, and we have to see here that Monica is being a little bit standoffish about the whole idea of doing therapy. So, you know, she's like, well, we need to schedule a time that you and I can sit down. And she's like, I'm literally never available, never, ever, once. So I can't <laughs> do that. Like getting lunch plans with a high school friend you don't want to see. Yeah. Ooh, let me see. You know, Mondays through Sundays are not great for me, but how are your leap years? Are your leap years good? Monica's like, look, the last thing I need is an objective third party assessing my actions. I'm the bad guy in this movie. My ex-husband wrote it. So sorry. No, just no. And then she tags in Shane, right? So he can have his first like, 81 seconds of therapy. Right. She said she wants to see Shane for a few minutes. It's like, I don't think you're going to crack it in that time. I think no. you should dedicate more no. time to the kid. Yeah. No, I need more therapists to do like a 90 second roundup at the very beginning of therapy. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Quick high five. Get the fuck out. All yes. right. Good so, first sesh. 
So he comes in and of course he's gawing his way through therapy. He's wearing his headphones. He's honest. He's, t- he's texting somebody. He's not paying any attention to her, right? And he, he is 90% mascara and fake tan. I, I, I can only assume because he is significantly older than the 17 he's meant to be. So they've sort of like mm-hmm. filled in the cracks with fake tan and just like shoot him slightly smudgy and hope you don't notice. Okay. Also, his hair is completely inexplicable. I got lost in his hair for some time here because he's, he's got like a helmet of hair, like 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 a, a sort of a Hispanic princess Diana is kind of the hair that he's got, <laughs> got going on. Sure, yeah, I love this. It looks like it was fired at him from the side. Right, like mm-hmm. not like it grew out of his head, but like they shot it from a fucking cannon and it just stuck. If if you follow any single bit of hair, it doesn't go towards his head. None no, the head starts at the head and then goes out from there, but none of his does, and I don't understand how. <laughs> it's like he wants to speak to a manager about why existence is pain. <laughs> <laughs> But she lays down the rules of therapy, can't use his phone, he can't swear, he can't use headphones, which, I mean, I think that implies the phone, and also he can't hit her in the head. Always, look, I've had a lot of therapists over years, and the best ones, the best ones start with a weird, rude, rude rule about language. Yeah, right. (laughs) Look, I want you to talk about anything you feel... Unless it's the F word, in which case I'm putting a hard <laughs> no on that one. So, yeah, and then we, we we flash back. So they leave. She watches them leave on her computer monitor. She, she for whatever reason, every time a client leaves, stares at them suspiciously on the security camera. Yeah, I don't know why she's got access to the CCTV from her office PC. That doesn't seem normal to me, but that's a little fine. She's got that. It's fine. A little fucking weird. Yeah. So then we cut straight back to salsa class. And once again, the the salsa instructor is just barking useless information at them. Yeah. At one point, doesn't he say to them, you know, ballroom on top, Latin on the bottom, which to be fair is my favorite porn hub category. So he has got that nailed. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, but we get a, a bunch of weird dance instructor fucking banter or something. And then we fade into the whole class out salsa dancing together. So it's no longer class. They're actually doing the deed. And I, this is such a weird fucking scene because everybody looks and there's these two, this couple that's doing a really good job. And everybody's like, wow, that's Victor and Amy, the best darn salsa dancing duo in this entire town. And you assume that at some point now, you know, Raquel is going to have to dance against Victor and Amy and find the right, but we will never see these two characters nope. again. <laughs> nope, they're just like, Victor and Amy, you know they do anal. Like, they don't even get ready. <laughs> they just do anal, Victor and Amy. <laughs> we'll never see them again. Nope. And then this is also just a sad scene that doesn't have to exist in the movie, but knowing that the woman wrote it makes it so heartbreaking. She comes out of class and she's like, does anyone need a ride and park nearby? And they're like, no, no, we don't want to hang out with you anymore. End of scene. Yes. Never yeah. has any God's Incredible. Incredible. Yeah, no, clearly the the writer was just like, I guess this probably happens to everyone all the time when they offer people rides. That probably very relatable <laughs> thing to have happen. So she's driving home. She gets a call from that friend from the answering machine earlier, the one that wants her to go back to church. Yeah, this is the, the first time we actually see Kim. Mm-hmm. And I, for one, think it's nice that E.T. settled down and joined a church. I think that's cool <laughs> <laughs> that he uh, managed that. Yeah, so he phoned home, but he phoned her first. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. she's like, "Well, have you watched that preacher video I sent you?" And and she's like, "Only the first ninety seconds." And she's like, "You should watch the next ninety seconds now." <laughs> 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 While you're driving, by the way. And she's like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I've not been to church. I've just been doing literally anything else." And you know what? It's much better. Like yes. way, way better. <laughs> Why wasn't I doing this the entire time? <laughs> so yeah, so she hangs up on Kim. And then she watches a little bit more of the preacher video. Oh, and so this is this is Christian movie like tech stuff. She goes back to the to the, the preacher video, but it's very clearly in her photos folder. She's not clicking a link to view it, which means uh, what literally means is that they didn't know a way to actually make this work on their phone, so they put it right, on the yeah, phone right. in the photos. <laughs> but in the in the canon of this film, it means she watched the first ninety seconds when she was in a kitchen, was disgusted and annoyed by it, turned it off, but thought, "I best download a full copy of this entire thing in case I need to watch it while in transit. I <laughs> yes. may change my mind on it later." <laughs> yeah. So, and of course, he's telling her the stages of grief. For fuck's sake, yeah, that's where he's going with his sermon. 
Also, I feel like if your sermon is on grief, you don't need quite as many jokes, right? He's just right. got a bunch of weird yuck yuck moments in this sermon. And it keeps having the audience react to it like they're watching Seinfeld at his peak, just like constant kind of uh, yeah. interjections of audience laughter. Oh, the crow, he says, you know, the first stage is denial. And I'm not talking about that river in Egypt. The crowd goes nuts for that. Yeah. Ah, deny. Well, your brain literally can't handle the death of a loved one. <laughs> it sounds like another word. The best. And he says, in the second stage is anger, and there's more stages, but we're not going to get there because we're not there yet in the movie. So I guess we're two stages in. That's clearly earned us a break, but we'll be back in a flash with even more God and Salsa. Hey, Marsh. Oh, hey, Eli. What's up? Uh, I just wanted to thank you again for coming on the podcast today. So um, here. Eggs? Yeah. You know, for you and the wife, on me. Oh, um, that's really nice, Eli, but... No, 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 Marsh, 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 Marsh. I don't know what you've heard, but eggs are getting pretty expensive around here. And who knows what's going to be next. So, you know, hold on to those. Well, as much as I appreciate the offer, if you're looking to cut down the prices on your grocery shopping, why not try HelloFresh? What's HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. And the ingredients are like good, not just, you know, rattlesnake eggs you bought off the internet. No, no. You only find quality ingredients in HelloFresh recipes. In fact, ingredients travel from the farm to your home in less than seven days. So, you know, they're fresh. Wow. Some might even say that's fresher than the grocery store. It's true. HelloFresh sent us a box to try, and the veggies where they sent were so incredibly fresh and delicious. It's like having a personal grocery shopper with the recipes built in. That's why I know Illusions personally endorse HelloFresh as a product. All right, Marsh, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful65 and use the code Awful65 for 65% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash Awful65 and use the code Awful65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Thanks, Marsh. Now, you sure you don't want these? That depends. Are those rattlesnake eggs that you bought off the internet? Nyop. Yeah, they're definitely rattlesnake eggs. Nyop? Was your I wasn't, answer? I wasn't ready. You, were, you weren't ready for English? No. <laughs> I'm right there with you, Eli. <laughs> All right, family court is now in session. Uh, now, Mr. Smith, it appears that you and your wife can't agree on your son's therapist. Uh, that's right, Your Honor. You are so unreasonable. Now, now, no need for that. I've got a solution that should please everyone. I'm just going to choose a therapist for your son randomly. Sorry, did you say randomly? Yep. That way it's fair to everybody. All right. Uh, how's how about this guy, Zhao Shang? Uh, he is a schizophrenia specialist in Guangzhou, China. Uh, is that going to work for you guys? Uh, no, we live in L.A. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, I well, I did say randomly. Let me try again. Uh, just here in L.A. Uh, how about Doctor Abraham Hofstetter? He's he's right here in town. Uh, I mean, he could be good. Now, unfortunately, he did die. Uh, in 1947, but I could call the office and see... Uh, judge, Judge, I think you're taking random a little bit literally. Maybe just choose a therapist in the area that neither of us have chosen. Huh. I guess so. Okay, how about this? Uh, Dr. Raquel Thompson at Family Therapy. That's the person my husband wanted. Okay, perfect. We're agreed. You're a really bad judge. Yes, I am. Sure am. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Shane pulling up for his therapy session into the um, into the handicap spot. In an otherwise empty parking lot, which is an impressive level of douchebaggery. Yeah, yeah. Right? right? But he is driving a BMW, so it is entirely consistent, at least. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. <laughs> so. If that could be rolling coal, he would have the trifecta. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> 
So, yeah, so when he pulls up to the therapy session, he's not into therapy, though. He's not paying attention. He's he's looking at his phone. He's ignoring Raquel. Yeah, he's looking like Cristiano Ronaldo in a Princess Diana wig. Yes, yeah, that's exactly what <laughs> And so she, to get his attention, dr- drops a heavy book in front of him. And look, I'm, I'm not going to pretend to know what you as a therapist are supposed to do when someone is that resistant in a session, but I'm pretty sure loud, sudden noise <laughs> is not the recommended clinical solution. Yeah. And in case you needed to be terrified, I will remind you, the co-author of this movie and the person whose story it is was a licensed clinical therapist. Woof. Oof. So, okay. So now this is actually actually going to be the first moment in this movie. I know we're a third of the way through it and everything, but this is the first moment in the movie where this kid is going to talk for any extended period. And we're going to realize that he has an incredibly thick Spanish accent. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's unexpectedly Spanish given the parents that we've met. Right. And I thought, is this why the sister doesn't speak? What accent does she have? Is this going to be like, She's like super problematic? Austrian or something? <laughs> no, no. I, I think it's subcontinent. I, I think this is uh, this is one of the one of the places where she should not have that accent. It's best you don't say anything, to be honest. Amanda, can you tell us what it's like for you? Well, I'll tell you. First of all, <laughs> good Shabbos. No one's wished me a happy Shabbos yet. Hello. <laughs> so, but so he's going to try to do the fucking the Matt Damon to Robin Williams thing from Goodwill Hunting where he gets inside her head. But like this actor is no Matt Damon and this writer is no <laughs> also, also Matt Damon, I guess. So yep. <laughs> it does not go well. He's like, I bet you got into therapy because you had a backstory with the narration, like a voiceover of a suicide note earlier. And she's like, Ooh, too close to home. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's trying to do look. I don't know why I, I blame Silence of the Lambs, right? Because mm-hmm. Silence of the Lambs has that scene where Hannibal Lecter is like, ah, stuff on the nipples. And ever <laughs> since then, to show someone is mean, they do the Hannibal Lecter thing, but he sounds like my Melania Trump impersonation. Mm. So it's very hard for him to be like, but you think that you know what the Guatemala, but you never have seen the Congo Zoiba. <laughs> So, and the thing is, the stuff he's saying, it's meant to be like, oh, he's like, he's dead on. But he's not dead on because no. he's saying like, oh, you become a therapist to deal with the death of your daughter and your divorce. And it's like, no, she was already a therapist. Her daughter only died like a month or something ago. Right. She has not qualified in that time. I also love, so, so she gets a phone call or a text at this point that he has to move his car out of the handicap spot. But, but like, but like her, you, you would think she'd turn her phone off. For this what moment, kind of therapist right? doesn't have her phone on vibrate in the middle of a session with a suicidal teenager? Oh yeah, and that's like that's I, it's like, so I, bad. I know, I know you're on the brink right now, and I know that your life's in jeopardy. But just hold on a second. I've really got to take this. I've, I've got to. I've got to take this. I'm so sorry. I just got. I have a level boost on Candy Crush. I am <laughs> listening. I am 100 percent listening. But I, I just get a free sprinkly ball if I do this. So- <laughs> do you want to be my friend? I still get extra lives if we. No. So yeah, so he so so he says, yeah, no, I'll move my car, and he just leaves. He leaves therapy all together because he's not taking this very seriously at all. And when we get it, when he stands up, we see that he's he's turned up the cuffs on the bottom of his skin tight jeans, and I and I wrote, I wish the fentanyl had taken him. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> So so then we check back in with that nun flashback from before. You see, when the nun in El Salvador heard things blowing up, the immediate reaction was to ask God to forgive all the people who were killing and genociding and blowing shit up. And the kid's like, wait, no, that you, I think you have that backwards. Shouldn't God smite those people? And she teaches her about the importance of forgiveness. Yeah. Right. I mean, she she could have taught her to first pray for the victims because the nun skips that whole bit. Yeah, like, oh, she there's does. a bomb gone off in a, in, a, in a crowded place. I best pray for the terrorist. <laughs> right. You're right. Weird instinct. That was her go to. Yeah. So but then we, we cut to, to dinner with Monica, Shane and the generic little sister, Amanda. Right. And she's like, you know, Shane, you're not eating your food. I bet it's your dad's fault, huh? Because he's such a piece of shit and, and I'm turning you against him. And he goes, no, it's not that. And look, I, I'm sure something happened in this scene. I could not tell you because Amanda, the little sister, is fucking housing her food. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like <laughs> like it's oh, yeah. fuck that the oh imaginary dinner scene from Hook. It's so distracting because <laughs> they're having this incredibly dramatic, like, 
she's trying to turn you again. And Amanda's just like, oh, God, this is so good. Are you a first act? You got a time. <laughs> Keep in mind, also, this little girl has not spoken the entire movie. She's just sat there in total stillness, like Pat Oswalt trying to end a contract in King of Queens. And now this is the only time she's moved, we're watching her devour a plate like a fucking baby hippo. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And- I think I think what I've realized about this is this film did not have money for craft services. It had no budget for craft services. Oh, okay. Hanging around a film set all day takes a long time. It's very boring. People start to get cranky and hungry. And this little kid had not eaten all day. And then suddenly there's a scene with food and she's like, yes, please. Fuck. I have all yeah, of this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wanted her to be like suggesting food in the rest of the scenes to prove that's true. And she's just like, I guess I could tell you over a pizza. <laughs> perhaps at the ice cream parlor we could discuss further so, so yeah so but but Shane leaves the table and mom's like leave your door cracked I don't want you fentanyling in there yeah, so don't mention crack to the drug eat son it's too soon <laughs> don't say crack around him so and then we're back at salsa class right that emotional scene immediately gives way to salsa dancing and this time it's a one-on-one right she's having a one-on-one lesson with the salsa instructor yep so he can give her like you know, I don't know, psychiatric salsa pep talk. Right. The rapiest possible psychiatric <laughs> pep talk. Cause he's like, look, you get, first of all, get your head in the salsa game. All right. <laughs> I know you have a kid who's about to kill himself. Who's in desperate, immediate physical danger, but this is salsa. Quit fucking around. <laughs> it's serious. Now take this seriously and imagine that I'm sexually desirable. <laughs> yes. hundred percent. Yeah. That's what he's doing. That is his advice. He's like, imagine that I'm your boyfriend. And she's like, I don't have a boyfriend. He's like, imagine that I'm something that you really, really like. And she says, I like chocolate. That's a great, great job, writer. And and he says, imagine, this is the actual line from the movie. He says, okay, imagine I'm a piece of chocolate and you want to put your hands all over it. <laughs> Do you not know how chocolate works? I don't think anyone who wrote this movie knows how chocolate works. No, I don't think they do. Or I want a flash cut to the scene of her just being like, I'm sorry, I just had such a tough day. And she's just rubbing her hands back and like washing her hands yeah. with a Hershey bar. You know, M&Ms are great for this, actually. <laughs> yeah, she's here turning up to places with like chocolate covered hands like a toddler. It's like, sorry, I, just, I saw some chocolate I couldn't resist. Yeah, but she dances some more. And and so so and then we cut to her therapying Monica, right? This is the divorced mom that's trying to turn the kids against dad. She's having her therapy session now. And it, it does the, the reverse transition of this because like cha 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 how long ago was the divorce? What? Yeah, right. It's just so <laughs> jarring. It's so yeah. sudden. Her open is so whose fault was the divorce? And would you say your kids loved that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, yeah, she's like, so why did you divorce your husband? And and she says, well, he had an affair with one of his students. He's a high school teacher. We haven't mentioned that yet. He's a high school teacher. He is. Yeah. yeah. You don't have an affair with your high nope. school you student. You rape You're one a of your... pedophile and yes. they're one of your victims. Yes, that is a serious abuse of power. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, Jack the Ripper, he, uh, he had an affair with several hookers <laughs> on the streets of London. <laughs> and, the, and then she says, you know, and he just, he set a bad example for the kids. And Raquel says, how so? And I'm like, other than grooming high school students, you mean? And she does mean that, yes. She, she does? Means yes! That she, she, he let the kids stay up past their bedtimes. That's the bad example. And watch R-rated movies, yes. She, she does justify his affair, his sleeping with the, the student as well, because apparently the student was of age, mm-hmm. which does not make it better. Like, yeah, so he explained that, like, technically the term is hebophile. You know, like, you know, Mary from the Bible was only 14. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. No. Why do I work for Breitbart? <laughs> So I think what they're going for is that she was an 18-year-old high school student. But yeah, and and maybe that makes it better legally speaking. But yeah, yeah, still pretty fucking problematic. Mm. Not here in the moral dimension, though. No, right? And it's right. certainly not some... Right, the fact that the writer of this movie thought his ex would be like, no, 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 let me explain. It's not as bad as you think. He fucked a technical adult he was in charge of taking care yes, of. Yes, right. But we all got that this was lies, right? This was all lies. Because like... 
that's what this movie was doing because it set her up to be a bad guy. Like, mm-hmm. look, I'm not saying we shouldn't believe women. We should believe women. I'm saying we shouldn't believe this woman because this this movie has made it very clear we should not believe the mother. Don't cancel me in the Facebook comments. <laughs> this particular lady should not be believed in the, the the realm of this movie. We have established that. Yes. Well, but here's the weird thing, right? Because again, I know that this movie is about a guy rewriting the story of his divorce. It makes me feel like if I did enough digging, I would find out that this director slash writer absolutely dated one of his students and is like, mm. oh, did you see the movie? I had an explanation for that. It's, yeah. in the, it's a lie. Yeah, right. Yeah, it does definitely feel that way. <laughs> well, but in case we're not getting Marsha's point about how we shouldn't believe what this woman says, we zoom in at this point as she leaves on Raquel's notes that she's keeping <laughs> on her little legal pad. She has written three words on this fucking page insincere manipulative narcissist <laughs> she's really lucky that the mum didn't like that that monica didn't stand up at any point and glimpse the pad <laughs> cuz she's written it really big over like four lines each right, one right yeah exactly. like, she's, like she's making a sign she's going to hang in the door for when she's going on a break or something yeah <laughs> so- now i really want to peek at my therapist notes next time that oh fat podcaster <laughs> oh and then we go back to the salsa club. Now we're not at salsa class. So salsa class and salsa club happen in the same room, right? Right at, at the same exact place where the camera's set up. But we sometimes will have like a DJ in the back, and there will be like you know dance club lights going, and that's when it's actually salsa club instead of salsa class. Okay, yeah. I did not realize that until you just said that because I'd written in my notes, <laughs> wow, this salsa class is really taking off now. It's, it's packed. It's, it's great. <laughs> oh, see, now that I was bored by this scene. So I was like, okay, guess is about how salsa is going to connect to the rest of the movie. She's going to make Shane do salsa therapy. She's going <laughs> to salsa fight him. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, your notes are, it's just so sad as you slowly give up on the concept that these two streams are ever going to cross within the film. (laughs) So, okay. So now we get Shane showing back up to therapy. He's still not taking it seriously. He's 40 minutes late this time. Yep. He also looks like a cat got turned into a sulky human from here (gasps) on in. Yeah. He does. Mm -hmm. So, and, and she has to give him this speech where she's like, look, we are well into act two at this point. You need to drop the emotionally impenetrable tough guy act so we can get on with the fucking movie. Okay. And can I just say, if my therapist is crying when she's telling me about how good she is at her job, I feel like she's probably not. Yeah. I feel like she's probably not. (laughs) Also, she wraps up this little passionate speech to him by calling her daughter's suicide a successful suicide attempt. And look, I don't know the clinical terminology, but I feel like successful suicide attempt is a weird way to put it. It really had a like my daughter killed herself way better than you did vibe to it when she said it. Yes. Oh, yeah. She absolutely should not have printed out a certificate for her daughter for the achievement and hung it on the fridge or anything like that. I thought it was weird that she gently laid it across her chest during the open casket funeral. But, you know, (laughs) everyone grieves in their own way. (laughs) Jesus. And then and the bumper sticker on the back of her car. My daughter killed herself on her very first try. Again, not (laughs) tasteful. And that's just my that's just my opinion. I didn't think it was a tasteful bumper sticker. That's fair. If you would like a my daughter killed (laughs) herself. (laughs) <laughs> on the first drop bumper sticker then go fuck yourself you really shouldn't want one of those no that is fair I'm, I'm putting that in a merch store right now no, I don't know not. which Marsh so- website I'm putting <laughs> <laughs> oh god I have a bunch <laughs> so but then so she decides then to storm out on him she gives him this big speech about mm. how he needs to take his therapy seriously and then she storms out but like they were in her office. Yes, her therapy office. Yeah, yeah. She stormed out of her place of work and he's just in her office without her. But with all of the confidential patient files, including his yeah, own, yeah, yeah. including the file calling his mum a malignant narcissist. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, did this movie just forget what location this scene was set in at this point? Know. So then we, we, we get dad's therapy session. Right, where he's going to explain now that she's a liar, that Monica's a liar, and all that stuff that she said about him fucking one of his students is a lie. Right? Yep. And she's like, I 100% believe you. I need no further evidence. Right, yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. I won't follow up on it in, in any way. And I'm also going to tell you what your wife said about you in her therapy session. Yeah. yeah. So she says all the things that, her, that the wife said. And he said, well, you know, except she left out abusive. She did say you were a pedophile. It does imply there's some abuse involved yeah, I there. Think I feel so. like that's implied in the definition there. I think so. And this is where, like, I did not realize that this movie was this guy's side of the divorce until this scene where he gets into way too many specifics that will never matter for the movie. He's like, well, I put her through real estate school. Also, she had an affair with a con man named Jack Jacobs. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, at this point, I wrote, oh, this script is evidence in a custody trial, and the guy lost custody. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> his defense against the whole sleeping with students thing is that he only ever slept with one student. But I only ever violated the trust people placed in me as a teacher that one time is still not a great defense. That's no. still nope. sackable offense and like put on a list material. This is also the point where they sort of post hoc explain... Shane's accent, right? Or at least make a go of it. He's like, you know, the only time I ever slept with a student was her when I was a teacher in Madrid and she was a kid from Alabama who was taking my English class in Madrid. Stay with me now. Get out your yarn. So what you're going to need is you're going to need at least four different colors of push pit here. But, but anyway, he explains that when they first got married, they lived in Spain for a number of years and then moved back to the U.S. That's why their kid doesn't have the same accent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then again, in the peak of insensitivity for this character, he goes, I'm sorry. I just feel like my kids are dead. And there's an awkward moment where he's like, oh, sorry. I, I feel, um, feel yours is funny. <laughs> <laughs> I guess what I'm saying is I get it. And then he says, how do you cope? And I wrote in my notes, Dude, her kid is actually dead. She doesn't just feel that way. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, and her answer is so bizarre because she's like, you know, how do you cope? And she's like, you know, salsa. <laughs> it's not, yeah. Hey, uh, let me say something as brave as it is hurtful. If salsa dancing gets you over your dead kid, I don't think you loved your kid that much. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just going to throw that out there. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, no, you know, it's anything that you do that's physical. As long as it's physical, it'll be, uh, it'll get your mind off of it. Yeah, and it's like, keep it in your pants, lady. This is a professional <laughs> yeah, right, setting. Right, right. Just because yeah. he's got his shirt unbuttoned doesn't mean he's asking. Now exactly. picturing Jean Benet <laughs> Ramsey's parents like swinging some kettlebells, weeping. <laughs> this is better. <laughs> Killed their daughter. So, okay. So now she's in the car. She's flashing back to being told about her daughter's suicide. Okay, so this this threw me. This threw me because it. What we're hearing is essentially the coroner's report, but it looks like she's listening to it in the car because we've seen her watching stuff in her car. <laughs> right? So thought, yeah. Uh -huh. Has she just got the coroner's report from her dead kid on her phone to listen to when she's in the car, which is a weird choice? And then I remembered that happened to me once. What genuinely did happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So very long story, but for a skeptical investigation, I ended up ha having to get the audio recording of someone's coronary report that someone who died as a result of pseudoscience and things like that. And so when I got that on my phone, when I got that on to get that onto my phone for me to listen to, it automatically added it to iTunes without me realizing. <laughs> and then my phone synced to iTunes and it got it just added into the shuffle. And then when I was driving at one point, it came on in shuffle and it was just <laughs> a, lady's, a lady's death report. <laughs> yeah. So we listened to that for a minute, just apparently just to trigger that anecdote from Marsh. Hey, Marsh, you know how this guy made a whole movie to explain his divorce away? I feel like you agreed to be on God Awful Movies six years ago so that you can explain why Mike got in your car once and you were listening to a coroner's report. I just wanna, I'm not buying it. I just want to say on the record, I'm not buying it. So yeah, so, so she listens or she remembers that for a bit and then she starts watching a little bit more of Pastor John's video and she also, she told the dad, she's like, you know, hey, if you want to get through to your kids, send them pictures of back when you guys were having fun, you know, like back before they hated you. So while she's listening to the pastor, we're getting like shots of the dad going through all his old photos of the family. You say old? How old do you think those photos are, Noah? Because eight, nine hours. Yeah, everyone in those, every single one of those photos looks identical to how they look in this movie. These are days old at most. The happy times he had with his family last week. Yeah, yeah the visit, the visit to the green screen store. <laughs> <laughs> These are the worst green screen photos I've ever. At one point, they're camping, 
and they're supposed to be, I forget what they're supposed to be holding. They're supposed to be holding something, but neither, they've just made fists in front yes. of whatever object, whatever it is oh, they're fish. holding. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes fish, fish. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's so bad. There's, there's the action shot of them at dinner where they're all like, oh, he's carving, he's about to eat, but they're all in it. So who took the picture? <laughs> right. Who, who did you invite around? Did, what, that you just eat in front <laughs> of while house. they photoed you? Yes. yes. <laughs> Like all of these pictures are so fake that I started head canning a theory about the, about that their whole marriage was just a sham marriage in order to get a green card. <laughs> and so these pictures were deliberately fake to oh. try and give them a backstory. You know, think about it. They met abroad. They are horrible together. Their son has an inexplicable Spanish accent. The daughter won't speak. Mm. All right. What happened, I think, is random Spanish lady and her kids wanted a green card. He wanted some cover for being genuinely a pedophile. It was a win-win situation, but they had to fake these photos in order to, to fool immigration. All right. All right. Yeah, better film than the rest of this film is. Just made a better movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then, so we cut straight from that to, to salsa dancing at the club some more. And this is where, like, yet again, the the dance instructor is going to explain how therapeutic salsa is because it allows (laughs) you to feel the touch of another human being and forget your sadness for a while. This is also where he turns and he tells all the personal (laughs) secrets of everyone in the room. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Because you remember the first time he was like, look at these motherfuckers. They all suck. This time he's just like, look at her. She just got a cancer diagnosis. And Byron's wife just left him. And I wanted so badly for Byron to be like, hey, and him to be like, shut the fuck up, Byron. (laughs) (laughs) Shut the fuck up. (laughs) So then, okay, so then we get Shane coming in for therapy again, but for realsies this time. Yeah. Right? This is where, like, she makes him make the first move, right? Mm. She's playing therapy chicken with him or some shit. I know we talk about how bad Christian Spake's work is a lot, (laughs) but at the beginning of this scene, as he comes in and sits down, this actress has to do looking at a computer, and it is some of the worst looking at an object I've ever seen. Like you watch it. It's a weird thing that you even have that scale. But yes. <laughs> blink, blink, blink eyes. Normal looking, normal looking, looking Left. normal. She's right. so blink. confused through this. It's, it's not so much that she's looking at the computer screen. She might as well be looking for the computer screen. That's how confused <laughs> she looks throughout this. Like she's looking around in a the confused face. And it's a bit like when I'm working, but my cat Mildred jumps on the desk and decides she really has to attack the cursor and she's just following it around <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so he comes in and he sits down and she's just like, I'm still doing my computer thing. I am still <laughs> finishing up my computer, computer stuff, stuff. is my favorite stuff, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and finally he's like, Hey, you want to do therapy? And she's like, I thought you'd never ask. Yeah. And he opens with, Do you know why your daughter killed herself? Woof. Mm. Yeah, Yeah. it's like, so uh, dead kid, huh? That's basically his opener. (laughs) Yes. right. And she lies. She's like, I'll never know why my daughter killed herself. And I'm like, okay, lady, she told you in the note. We heard the (laughs) note. We We heard the note. We were listening to the VL. Yeah, she said it was your fault. Like, I wouldn't share that right away, too. Right. (laughs) We know. It is your fault. Yeah. And he's like, well, you know, I wasn't really trying to kill myself. And she says, do you do a a lot of drugs then recreationally? He says, I mostly just do pot. And that's the exact quote I wrote in my nose. Yeah, that's how the kids talk these days, right? I mostly <laughs> just do the pot. Yeah. At one point, she crosses herself. She does the side of the cross. And he goes, oh, wait, wait why do you believe in religion? And she's like, uh, none flashback. It's a whole thing. It's a- Well, she says she used to. Yeah. He's like, you believe in God? And she says, I used to. And I was like, now you just make gestures for fun? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because she does cross herself like a footballer entering the field. It's kind yeah. of the, the up, down, left, right, and kiss the fingers kind of thing. Yeah. So, and, and she's like, yeah, you know, I, there was a nun that I really looked up to when I was a kid. You'll you'll know her from the flashback. I actually wanted to be a nun at one point. So my mom got me laid. <laughs> that's the <laughs> so best. Not, mm. not exactly the quote, but that's the implication. Yeah, oh, she goes, my, yeah. my mom bought me a bunch of short skirts. And then and it turned out that nun was a total bitch to me. So actually it really worked out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, but she tells him about the miraculous time that she was heading from El Salvador to emigrate to the U.S., and it, she, at a bus station in Mexico City, she ran into her favorite nun. And Shane goes, wow, that's quite a coincidence. She goes, 
oh no, it was a miracle. And I'm like, no, it's, a, it's slow the fuck down. It's a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, it's still a coincidence. But also, <laughs> do the movie think that this is a persuasive story that's going to convert people to God? That, that oh, I looked for the nun and she wasn't there in Mexico. And then they looked again and she was suddenly there. And it's like, yeah, I didn't believe. But then this actress in a film talked about a fictional teleporting nun from El Salvador <laughs> and that swung it. And now I'm religious. Yeah. It's what did it for me. Yeah, but she says, you know, but, but the nun told me that when you lose track of God, that's when he's really the closest. And he's like, that doesn't make any sense at all. And she's like, yeah, but it's the kind of shit you have to keep telling yourself makes sense if you want to believe this nonsense is a grown up. So I God's don't. like the weeping angels from Doctor Who. Have you seen Doctor Who? <laughs> it's like that. Don't blink. He gets closer to you. So and then she's like, hey, by the way, Shane, do you have like um, like suicide blueprints? It feels like she's hunting for tips. Right? Oh God, she, it does. She's weirdly into it. She, she wants to talk through his suicide plan, but she says it a bit like she's there to workshop and punch it up a little. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, ooh, pills, huh? That's just, I don't know. It's just, uh, just, just a lot just of time for someone uncreative. to find it's you. It's original. Everybody does. Stomach pumping is a pretty effective technology, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> and it's like, I wrote in my notes, I was like, okay, well, it's where having a plan doesn't necessarily mean you're suicidal. Um, guys, I Googled it. Apparently, you are not supposed to have a plan. <laughs> no, you're well, not, man. So the official advice is to just vibe it. That doesn't Yeah, apparently, right. you're supposed to fucking... <laughs> now it feels weird. Like, like every time I start to plan, I'm supposed to be like, no, okay, I guess I'll fucking wing it. Um, am I allowed to have a suicide plan for you? Is that allowed? <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> God. This month, Marsh, you sure fucking are, man. <laughs> So, and then, of course, it, it, now is the time on Sprockets when we dance again, I guess, right? Because <laughs> we've, we go back to the salsa club. Now we have a live salsa band. Also, suddenly, one of the dancers is wearing a COVID mask. Yep. Yeah. I mean, under her nose, but she is wearing it. Yeah. Well, right, yeah. yeah. More than most are doing. So I can't, I mean, I mean, not that I could salsa dance anyway, but whoo, <laughs> yeah, have it that. And then this salsa, it goes on forever. Nobody says anything. Nothing happens. And then it ends. And when it ends, I'm like, oh, thank God that long, boring salsa scene was over. But then I realized it was going to cut back to the movie. So it's like, wait, I guess <laughs> there's no reason to be relieved. Yeah, it's sort of a damned if you do situation. Yeah, <laughs> right. So, okay. So Shane's back at therapy. He's talking about getting those texts from his dad. And he's like, you know, they sure did change my overall opinion of my dad because, you know, they were only a week old. So I must have liked him yeah. once and relatively recently. And she's like, Shane, Shane, I'd like you to try a, a therapeutic exercise we call hating your mom instead. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, she gives him homework. She says, I want you to make a list of all your dad's good qualities and your dad's bad qualities and all your mom's good and bad qualities and all your good and bad qualities. Yeah. And it's like, so he has to go through all the, the good qualities about his dad. It's like, um, he's extremely unselfconscious about showing off his nipples. Wait, am I doing good or bad? I forget which list I'm doing now. <laughs> Not sure where this one goes. <laughs> and so then we cut to like dad jealously watching some other asshole play soccer with his son. Oh, the two <laughs> least competent people to ever kick a football. This is enraging to watch. <laughs> okay, but I had a moment here, though, where I was like, is this... Because, you know, in America, we have a catch. Right. But in your, do Europeans have a kick? Yes. Is that what you do? You have a kick with your dad? Yeah, you, you, you'd go... Well, other, other people would go out and uh, kick the ball out with my with their, with their dad. I've never seen... I've never recalled ever seeing my dad kick a football. He wasn't a kind of play with the kids kind of guy. But other people, yeah, you go and have a kick about your dad. Nice. Adorable. Nice. Amazing. So, yeah. So he's watching, he's watching him play. And then Shane shows up to hang out with him. And he's like, hi, you remember when we used to come out here and like enjoy each other's company and not hate each other? Huh? Huh? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, dad, I remember. I remember. And he brought pizza from <gasps> Vito's Pizza. Now, let me be clear. There's like a 0.6 second shot at the top of this box. It's the most horrifying thing I've ever seen in my life. I was like, I don't know why they made this for the movie. They didn't. It's a real pizza place in L.A. I want you to go ahead and Google Vito's Pizza. I've dropped it into our notes. Tim, feel free to share this out. 
the only way I can represent the top of this pizza box is that Vito, this must be Vito, was like, hey, can we put my face on the box for my pizza place? And they were like, sure. Do you want to shave or anything? And he was like, no, no. Just use whatever <laughs> photo you have with me and my mouth open like I'm being bodily removed from Olive Garden for proposing to my niece at her 16th birthday party. Do you have a photo of me? Are crying you sure outside. That a, a wizard didn't turn you a, from a pug a peg a corn into a pizzeria owner for the purposes of this picture? No. Yeah, exactly. Like said, Vito looks like he's this close to being inducted into the podcast of us at this point. That's, just, that's what Vito looks like. <laughs> and I guess if this movie can sneak an ad for Vito's pizza into this scene, I feel like we can get away with an ad too. But first, let me give back through the hard sell. Will God ever factor into this movie in a way that affects the plot? Will Sosa ever factor into this movie in a way that affects the plot? Okay, how about and? Will there be something relevant to and at some point? <laughs> Find out the answers to these questions and more. We'll be returned for the fantastically uninspired ending of God and Salsa. Okay, you ready? And go. <sighs> Guys, seriously, you're doing cocaine in between podcast segments. This is just like QED all over again. Okay. First of all, Marsh, that wasn't cocaine. That was heroin. And Andy offered it would have been rude to refuse. Thank you. Yes. And second, this isn't cocaine. It's boner pills we got from the gas station. That's yeah, the only way we can, uh, you know, get, be ready. All right. Well, first of all, none of that. Just none of it. Uh, and secondly, if you're dealing with ED and you're having trouble swallowing prescription medication, why don't you try Blue Chew? Ooh, is that where you melt down antifreeze and then absorb the gas through your ear holes? I've heard of that. Oh, you know, I did that in high school. No, no, it's not whatever that is. Mm -mm. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead and be ready whenever an opportunity arises. Nice. So, so who do we have to, you know, buy a sticker from to get this stuff? Just, no, no weird illegal stuff at all. None of it. Just the process is really simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. And the best part, it's all done online. So there's no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and there's no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Plus, Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and are prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Wow, Marsh, that does sound good. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I don't, I don't want to interrupt the sketch, but I had a little tapping on my mic just now. Could you, could you just read that last part one more time real quick? Just, just the last part. Seriously? It's in the must-reads. It's no, in the must-reads. No, mm -hmm. it's in the must-reads. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code AWFUL at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com promo code AWFUL to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. All right. Well, now that that's all sorted, can you guys stop snorting whatever it is that you're snorting? I'm going to tell you what we told Andy at QED, Marsh. No. Exactly. No. Right. Okay. Right. Chew it and do it. <laughs> um, John? Yes? So, yeah, I've got a quick question about the scene that's coming up. Um, the one between me and Shane? Uh, sure. What about it? Right. So, I know the character of Shane is 17, but could we perhaps, you know, make him 20, maybe 21? Plenty of people still live at home when they're 21. Nope. Uh, no, script says uh, 17. I don't really want to change that now. Sure, sure. No, I understand that. But isn't Javier a little too old for 17? Look, I understand your worry, but this is La La Land. They have older people playing teens all the time. Trust me. <sighs> I, mean, I suppose so. All right. Uh, and action. Listen, Shane, I know you're feeling trapped right now, but you have to know. What? Um, I said, Shane. I know you're feeling trapped. Who's Shane? You, you are. You, you are Shane. No, I'm Javier. Oh, seriously. Keep rolling. Um, anyway, I, you can't let those other boys pressure you. Into One second. Let me put my pillow down so I can sit. So you can... What? <sighs> oh, there. 
there we go. That's better. Now, who's this Shane person? Seriously, seriously. Stop breaking character. Fine. Shane, you have to not let the other boys peer press you because you have so much to live for and you're only 17. There, can we cut it now? Yeah, well, we have to. Why? Well, Javier died of old age. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Monica, Shane, and the little sister having dinner again. Mom is sick and damn tired of paying for all this therapy. (laughs) All she's doing is talking about how expensive therapy is, how useless it all is, and it all reads like an ad that Eli wrote for better help. (laughs) (laughs) Right. But, and, and she's like, but, you know, Shane, you should probably stop going to this therapy altogether. Your sister is in danger of being therapied if we keep this up much longer. <laughs> Your sister isn't ready for therapy. She is a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Do you realize that going to therapy could traumatize her so badly that she needs to go to therapy? <laughs> I know. Right. Mom seems to think they're getting anti-therapy somehow or something. But the sister's like. I love you, mom, and dad's a piece of shit. And we're all like, oh, she's she can speak. <laughs> yeah, we, we just learned that. And this is what I thought, oh, okay. Is the sister meant to be way younger than the actress playing her, which is why they got her dressed in dungarees and pigtails, but they can't have her speak because it would betray the fact that she's not four or whatever she's meant to be in this oh, film. That's the only yeah. thing that makes sense to me. All right, yeah, no, I get it. So yeah, but then Shane apologizes for not hating dad enough and for liking going to therapy. And, and mom forgives him. Yeah. So then we get him. He's pulling up at therapy again, but he parks back in the handicap spot. So apparently he's back to his bad old ways again. <laughs> yeah. And he quits therapy. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, our, our friends at BetterHelp make changing therapists easy and free. <laughs> yes. Is this why he says he's made a huge mistake? He, he just, yes. Like he's leaving therapy because therapy is bringing out the Spaniard in him. And so he wants out is basically what's happening, I think. <laughs> I'm not even left-handed. It switches yes. it. No, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> so Shane goes home and he overhears his mom on the phone with her evil high-dollar divorce lawyer. <laughs> yeah. And we cut across to the lawyer and it's like, why does it look like the, the lawyer, like this phone call has interrupted his wank? That's what it looks <laughs> like we're experiencing yeah. here. There's a real, it's a real sweaty, yeah. <laughs> mid-corpus vibe going on here. Also, mm. like, they're workshopping blackmail. He's like, um, I don't know. He's poison him. Can you poison him? Do you have a, yeah, a right. magic fairy who could steal his eyes? She's like, well, I want a hundred percent custody of the kids. He's like, Ooh, that's going to be expensive. I mean, difficult to do. <laughs> can you, can you frame him for something? Maybe a murder or something. Can you kill somebody maybe? Or, or what do you think? What do you, what can you do? And she's like, I could probably, I could talk my daughter into pretending to be abused. And he's like, Ooh, that's good. That's excellent. <laughs> really good. So, okay, so Monica calls Raquel and she's like, hey, you know, you were saying you wanted to therapy my daughter. And I think that would be a great idea now that we're trying to frame my husband for abuse. I mean, now that she has more free time on her schedule. So uh, (laughs) what do you say about the next scene? And she's like, yeah, no, the next scene would be great. Yeah, it's like, when can she come in? It's like, oh, well, I I think I can have her off book by Friday. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So we get mom and Amanda going into therapy. They're wearing matching outfits. Why are they dressed exactly alike? Why have they done that? It's so weird. It's fucking weird. Yeah. Now, look, if you're going to tell mommy's lies, you're going to wear mommy's fashions. So. I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So she goes in to talk to the therapist and we and she's like, you, you know, the therapist is like, what do you think your brother? And she's like, yeah, he's weird and annoying. And I really don't see why he would have a Spanish accent even if, I mean, because his parents would have been American even if he was born in Spain, but it doesn't make any sense. She's like, okay, so what do you think of your dad? And he's like, she's like, well, dad does some terrible things. She's like, ooh, like what? And then we cut away and we see Monica eviling out in the waiting room. Right. Yeah, she's using her super hearing to listen in through the walls is what it looks like she's doing. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah, because we can still hear him talking. Yeah. Yeah. But we cut back to the therapist's office you know, after the abuse allegation has happened. And she's like, oh, really? I don't know that I believe you, child, who has just entrusted me with a story of abuse. That seems a little suspicious. You seem pretty coached to me. (laughs) Yeah. 
He's like, what, what kind of abuse does he do? It's like, I don't know. My mum didn't prep me on that bit. I'm 11. <laughs> she didn't give me specifics. Yeah. Am I supposed to just vamp it? This- <laughs> We're using the same script Mia Farrow used. I don't know. I guess get passed oh, around LA. <laughs> So yeah, so she, but mom and, and Amanda leave. She watches them leave through her security footage on her on her computer again. They go in slow motion and they're dressed exactly the same. So it has a very gender swap reservoir dogs feel to it. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And then Raquel gets a call from dad and he's like, hey, you know, I just got noticed that my wife is trying to get 100% custody. And she's like, yeah, she just had your daughter come in and pretend that you abused her too. And he's like, really, yeah. are you allowed to tell me that? And she's like, not at all. Not even remote. No, no, not even a little. I should go to jail. Not just lose my license. I should go to <laughs> jail for the sentence I just said to you. But instead, they're just chatting really casually about fault. He's not even disgusted. He's not like irate. It's like, oh, did, did she say the abuse thing? Yeah, she said the abuse thing. Oh, she yeah, yeah, it. You know, they always do that. Pond of G7. Am I right? You know, that old <laughs> move. And Raquel's basically got her priorities all wrong here. She's like, yeah, you know, if you get set down for decades over false abuse allegations, I might not be able to be your son's therapist anymore. Yes. It's basically her response here. Yeah. yeah, she's like, if you get 100%, if she gets 100% custody, she'll she'll end therapy right away. And I'm like, feels like you're mostly worried about your paycheck. Now, Raquel, maybe you want to rephrase that? What am I going to do? Wait for another walk-in in this strip mall where I have my therapy center? <laughs> I was thinking of dancing around outside in a giant brain costume, try and pull some people oh, yeah. in. But it'd be way easier if you just won custody of your kids. So then we get Raquel driving home, listening to the next couple minutes of Pastor John's sermon. Okay. I have to point out a totally meaningless scene because I have a conspiracy theory about it. Okay. We watch dad selling a car and the yes. guy's like, are you okay if I pay in cash? That never comes up. It never matters. Except here's my theory. I think, again, this is all an excuse for this abusive dad to re-advocate his divorce through his weird salsa movie. <laughs> I guarantee you that scene is in there so that you can say, that's why I had all that cash that they said was the <laughs> Right, yes. I wasn't, I wasn't trying I'm to hide Coke. the money from her. <laughs> right. Yes. I wasn't, no. I just had sold my car for cash. I was going to tell her about it, but I sold <laughs> For cash. Yeah, like the next scene is him like coming across some teens and confiscating that bag of cork that they've got. And that's why he <laughs> had the cork as well. The girl was drowning, so I was giving her mouth to mouth. And then, oh, but then the pool... <laughs> that's why she was unconscious. There was an earthquake. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah, so, so we get that scene that we get more aloof salsa dancing. I got to be honest with you, because there's so many scenes in here where she's like supposed to be salsa dancing, but her heart's not really in it. I By the end of this, I kind of had a thing for aloof salsa dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you cannot deny that God and salsa has delivered on the salsa. You've no, got to give the film credit. Right. No, there's been if anything, there was more salsa in this than I thought there would be. There's certainly more salsa in this than the plot recommends. Right. Yeah. So- so and then we we have dad like trying to get his because because like dad can't afford one of them fancy schmancy lawyers like mom has so we have him like desperately trying to pay his lawyer enough money to get her to do the lawyer thing for him yeah and it's like if he can't find any more money he's got to sell the shirt that's barely on his back yeah that's <laughs> <basically it. laughs> I have four unused buttons yeah I'd give you the shirt off my back that's why it's unbuttoned actually <laughs> make that easier so meanwhile Raquel and her boss are in his office. They're lamenting the shame that got away. And that makes sense because he's the only patient that we've seen in this entire fucking clinic at any point, right? So he matters a lot to them. And the boss explains at this point, he's like, you know, with all these uh, abuse allegations and everything, you're probably going to have to testify at the custody hearing. And she's like, oh, I bet that'll be a very important and pivotal part of the movie, won't it? He's like, we're sure going to build it up like it is going to be. Yes, we sure are going to build it up like that. (laughs) And hey, if someone's advice about your testimony is don't let them break you, you're probably not on the right side of the (laughs) law. So so then we, we get Shane leaving school and his friend shows up. This is not somebody we've met yet in the movie. His friend shows up and he's like, hey, man, do you want to go do drugs and engage in other risk behaviors? And he's like, hmm. I don't know. I'm not so sure. I mean, what kind of pressures do you have to apply to me? And he's like, well, I've got some peer pressure. And he's like, that'll do it. That will do it. <laughs> I, will, I, will, um, I will drive you to the risk behavior, but I won't get involved. He's like, oh, you'll get involved. He's like, yeah, I'll get involved. I'll get involved. <laughs> Later on, I'm going to make a movie called uh, Tacos and Ballroom Dancing. That's all about how you're the one who actually did all the drugs. And you made me- <laughs> <laughs> it's a family tradition. 
<laughs> but like, this is friend who's also Spanish. She's like, is every, why is every incidental character in this movie a native Spanish? Was this a tax thing? Was it just cheap to <laughs> film wherever this was filmed? I don't know. And also his friend says to him about, because he's going to take him to a party, his friend says, you know, my, my friend, he's got the, the place. His dad's out of town, if you know what I mean. It's like, right. I don't know what else you could mean. You could only mean <laughs> one thing. Unless, <laughs> is it a euphemism for dead? It's a weird euphemism for dead. You know, his dad's <laughs> out of town. Wink. No, he's in a fugue state. I get it. My sister. <laughs> so, okay. So we head to this this rooftop party. The dude promised a party. He's like, no, Anthony's having a big party on a rooftop. So I wrote in the notes. So we head to the rooftop party. Party is a gross overstatement. They do not have enough people there for a decent game of code names. <laughs> they do not. It's an Eli party. It's just <laughs> one guy <laughs> sitting there drinking a single six pack of White Claws by himself. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. They've got three <laughs> cans of beer out. That's all they've got. Let's extend to this party. Three guys, three cans of beer. Wow. Yeah. He might as well organize a work trip to just to be like, yeah, no, we should all get together once a year. You know, they say. <laughs> you, you guys want to talk about whether the London recording or the symphonic recording of Les Mis is better? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> So Shane looks out over the rooftops. They justify renting that drone, right? With that shot. Yeah. And then meanwhile, Raquel is at home asking God why he was on his 15 when her daughter killed herself, right? Yeah. She's like mad at him for not existing again. But she's like, she's doing the thing where she's looking up at him. And I really wanted to be not God that she was talking to, but we just pan back and there's just the tall guy from Salsa just in front of her. <laughs> He's like, I'm sorry, I, I was I was dancing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Would it help if I squished you down into a teeny tiny tennis ball? <laughs> <laughs> like a chocolate orange. <laughs> so, the, and, and she's like, you know who I need to talk to is that old nun from the flashback. So I'll give her a call. So she calls the nun, but damn it, if the nun didn't just die last week. <laughs> What does this have to do with I anything? Don't know. So fucking stupid. Also, the nun she calls, she's like, she died, and she's like, oh, that's terrible. And she's like, she's in heaven with Jesus now, and I want her to be like, I, I get it. That's your brand. <laughs> <laughs> are we, are we supposed to think is this is the nun's death meant to be kind of like, oh, it's all going so bad for this lady because like, oh, her her daughter died, and now the mm -hmm. nuns died, but we don't know how long a gap there was in between because there's no right. sense of time in this movie. It's like, wow, what a bad week slash month slash decade this lady appears to be having <laughs> right. is the best we can do. So, okay. So then she cut back to Shane at the rooftop party lit and uh, he's calling his mom to lie about where he is and why he's not home yet. He's like, oh, you know, I stayed for the game and then me and my, my buddies are going to go out and get a bite to eat. And she's like, okay, don't overdose on fentanyl while you're out at the, <laughs> at the game. And he's like, well, I won't, mom, I promise. I won't. And then he starts weeping. And can I just say, if there's a three person party and one person is crying, you notice. Yeah. You do notice. Yeah. Well, I, I think I think they do notice, but they're just doing what I would do, which is just pretend it's not happening because that's super awkward. Just right. they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll, they'll stop <laughs> and then they'll come back and then we can carry on the Liam is conversation, but don't acknowledge it. It's the British way. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so so we get so Raquel goes out salsa dancing. There's this amazing scene where she, like she walks into the salsa club or whatever, and two of the chicks that are from the class go, "Huh, what's up with Raquel?" And we're like, "Nothing, nothing." There was like I don't know what you what that actor was supposed to be conveying as she walked in, but mm. she literally just walked by you. Is all because the psychotics who wrote this movie were like, and that night when I when Shane was going to kill himself. And my favorite nun died. That's when I really needed to dance it out. And they were like, oh, we will definitely make sure to point to that in the movie. That's just as important as everything else that's happening. <laughs> and it is actually technically. Yeah. So, yeah. So she does more aloof salsa at this point. Literally my kink. And we head back to the rooftop party. Shane has decided that he wants to buy some fentanyl from one of the guys at the party. I'd like one drugs, please. Yeah. One drugs. <laughs> and he just hands over a massive wad of cash for yep. the one drugs. Like, mm -hmm. here's, the, here's all of my money. Thank you very much. He's, and, and of course, the drug dealer is like, yeah, I don't need to count this or verify an amount in any way. That's not how drugs work at all. Here's your drugs. Here's your drugs in exchange for the money. Got it. Yeah. And he's like, of course, don't. But whatever you do, don't kill yourself with these again. I, I, my whole thing is is repeat customers. And he's like, no, no, I won't, I won't kill myself. 
with it. And he's like, sure. Are you sure? Because I gave you enough to kill yourself with 16 fucking times. And he's like, no, no. <laughs> you promise? Click, click the box. Click the box and then tell me everything that's a boat just to make so, sure. <laughs> so now we've got we've got aloof salsa dancing. We've got a rooftop depression montage. And suddenly into that, we layer over Pastor John's sermon some more. He's now telling the parable of a guy who is down in a hole. Yeah, so I didn't realize it was Pastor John to begin with. And I thought it was the DJ was just starting to do some spoken word <laughs> parable over the salsa music, which was just a bold artistic direction to take. Also, I've heard this parable a bunch of times across a bunch of these movies. This is a terrible parable. It's oh, yes. dumb. It's the worst it's parable. It's so fucking dumb. So here it is. He says, there's a guy and he's down in a hole and a dude shows up with a rope, but the rope is too short. And then a different guy shows up with a ladder, but the ladder wasn't tall enough. And I'm like, well, you just need to get the rope guy and the ladder guy there at the same fucking time. Problem solved. <laughs> but then a third guy comes by with a shovel and he jumps into the hole with the guy. And he's like, well, now we're both trapped in here. But the guy with the shovel is like, yes, but I know the way out, which is presumably to dig them themselves out. That's the parable. Right. But if, if that guy knew the way out, could he not have just yelled directions? Or, yeah, or is he I'm just one of those Toss down shovel. the shovel. <laughs> toss down the shovel. Yeah. And it's, it's an, I looked it up. It's like an AA parable. So it's supposed to be like, I was an addict and you're an addict. But it doesn't work for other shit. No. You can't just be like, no, trust me. If you see someone in danger, you put yourself in that danger <laughs> right. and then start giving instruction. She, she She's right over there in also the taking fentanyl or something. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> My pastor wasn't super clear about what we we're trying to do here. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but just then Shane calls Raquel, but she's busy salsa dancing. And I'm like, oh, my God, is salsa going to kill this kid in the end? God, if salsa <laughs> killed Shane, this is my favorite movie. Right? Yeah, yeah that's just a twist. I did. If the end of this movie was just her going, ah, fuck, credits. All right. I would have been 100% <laughs> in. 100% in. But there was this this dumbass, you know, one of these stupid pseudo miracles that Christians try to pretend matter. She's like, God like tells her that her cell phone is ringing. So she goes to check her purse. And I'm like, I feel like God's miracle shouldn't have so much crossover with like my smartwatches features. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't rely on her spidey sense going off for the phone call. Yeah. yeah. The miracle of the not missed phone call is what this is. That's the miracle <laughs> yep. we've got going on. Exactly. The, the the miracle of that time my phone rang and I answered it. <laughs> or actually she doesn't. She misses his call, right? She has to call him right back. And she's like, hey, tell me where you are so we can have a big dramatic final scene together. I really wanted them to do the awkward when like you miss someone's call, but they're leaving you a message. So then you leave them a message and then they go, oh, no, I missed a call. And then just like 26 minutes of that. I would, again, <laughs> yeah, we we'll love this. Stop calling. Stop calling. I'll, I'll call you. Me. Send in a text. Yeah. <laughs> the great thing is she's trying to talk him down and she's like, you know, just tell me where you are with all the drama. But she's still in the salsa class. So it's got a very loud salsa music in the background. It's like, just tell me where you are. Dum, da, da, dum, 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 dum. Oh, sorry. It's just too catchy. I can't do it. Right. Sorry, I, I am listening. Just, <laughs> I, are you remembering while you're talking me out, out of suicide? Is that what you're doing right now? <laughs> so yeah, and we're cutting back and forth between his rooftop and her salsa club. It's, so, mm -hmm. it's like it's like they're like, you know, we've done so many awkward suicide straight to salsa music transitions that now we need to ramp that up so there's something right. else for the movie to offer you. He might as well be cutting his wrist to the beat at this point. <laughs> comes to the level of security. And part of me thought, like, look, it's going to be really rough on her if he does jump and he dies. Unless she just leans into it and makes it her thing. Like in the adverts, like... <laughs> Got a shitty relative you want to take care of? Oh, Bring them to me. I've got this. <laughs> no. Because remember, it's not murder if they do it themselves. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so we cut to she's prey driving as hard fast as she can. Actually, she's not even going particularly fast. She's just sort of. You yeah. Know, also, she's doing that as opposed to calling 911, which is what she should be doing. Yes. Yes. And as a therapist, I feel like she should have a set procedure for exactly the scenario. And praying and driving are in neither of those scenarios. Right. It's well, not any part of the scenario. You know what it is? She missed the emergency situations workshop because she was doing the drop a heavy book to get their attention <laughs> workshop. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. That gets you. So, yes. Yeah, so, but she heads over. She finishes her nun flashback on the way over. And then she speeds up, which means that she was kind of just, you know, mosey before that. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I get it. She wasn't quite rushing. She was rushing to save his life at like medium pace because you right. know, cost <laughs> a fuel these days. You want to drive yeah. efficiently. No, right. No, that makes sense. Gas yeah. for noise. Shane's kind of a jerk. I get it. <laughs> so, so, but she gets to the rooftop. She runs up, and we see Shane. And Shane has um about thirty seven gallons of nose drool. Yes, dripping off of his face. Yeah, he's like he's he is in a web of his own snot. <laughs> oh, it's 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 disgusting. He he's saying he keeps uh, through all of this through Weepley. He's shouting, "I can't stop it!" But he's got so much snot coming out of his nose, it makes it sound like he can't stop the snot, and like he's <laughs> like he's worried about like bleeding out from snot or something like that. <laughs> yeah, and like. I spent last week in bed with cold. I get it. Um, my body's losing all of its salt. <laughs> and it's, it's just a tiny moment between the two actors, but he's like, okay, this is ridiculous. He wipes his giant snot booger on his arm, but it's the arm that's close to her. And it's very obvious that it's in the stage direction. She's supposed to like touch him, but she does. She's just like, well, that's the arm covered in snot now. So... <laughs> There, there, Shane, she said with her words and nothing else. There, there. <laughs> so, yeah, so she, but, but she's learned something here today. She says, I just figured this out just now when you were wiping snot off your face with your fucking arm like some kind of goddamn barbarian. She says, you know, sometimes when you're so far down deep in the hole, you need someone else to shine the light. And everyone, us, Shane, the actress herself goes, fucking what? Yeah, what? Yeah. What does that even mean? <laughs> but the music is pretty sure she's nailing this. Oh, the skull thinks this is absolutely inspirational. Yeah. Yeah. She does the, it's not your fault bit from Goodwill Hunting. He does it to her. It's not your fault with your kids. <laughs> oh, that's, yes. But it is her right. fault. We covered that at the start. It was her fault. Like yeah, the letter the kid, says, I'm sorry I'm doing this, mom, but it's, it's very much on you. <laughs> yeah, but that was enough for him. So he's decided not to take the, and I paused and counted the number of pills in his goddamn hand, 24 fentanyl that he had there. Yes. $28 billion worth of drugs. So le legit, let's take you know, like 40 bucks a pill. That's like a thou almost $1,000 yeah. worth of Yeah, pills. it is a comically large handful of pills. I think that's what he needed her to bring a shovel for so he could like <laughs> carry these pills. <laughs> now the parable makes sense, yeah. So he just drops these 24 fentanyl pills, this lethal amount of fentanyl times 16 or whatever on the roof. And he's like, I'm sure some birds will find them or something. <laughs> so, okay. We cut to the next day. Monica gets a phone call from Raquel. Right. And if this ringtone on the phone call had gone on any longer, Raquel would have turned up to dance to it. That's how long this <laughs> ringtone is. So, she, so, but Monica, at first, she's like, you know, I don't want to deal with you anymore. I found out that your own daughter died of suicide, so you're a terrible therapist. <laughs> and she's like, actually, I was calling to tell you about the the lie thing that you had your daughter tell me, and I'm going to pretend to play along with it. And she's like, oh, right, yes, my nefarious plot. Shit, shit, yes. No, in that case, I am in. We can talk. So they meet up together, and we have this moment where, like, Raquel is trying to kind of explain to her like, hey, look, I know you're trying to like turn your kids against their dad. And I know that you like told your daughter to pretend that the dad's abusive and everything. But like Monica is aggressively not getting it. <laughs> yeah, because Rachel's sort of Raquel's trying to be like polite about it and sort of talking in hypotheticals. Like, so say someone wants to do this. This is the kind of thing they might do. And Monica's like, hmm, interesting. But what about me and my kids? How do you <laughs> what are you thinking towards? <laughs> yes. Her aggressively misunderstanding the point this way. It it I had flashbacks to be reasonable interviews that I've had that way. That was exactly <laughs> the same tone. I bet you did. Do you just need Marsh to get on the line. Do you not think that some people might say? <laughs> <laughs> What do you say to the argument that? Mm. <laughs> so, but but ultimately, Raquel's like, she's like, look, I'm, I'm sick of beating around the fucking bush. I know that you told your daughter to lie and say that Matt abused her. And I will testify a, a, to as much in court. And she's like, really? Just based on your hunch? She's like, based on my hunch. Yes, that's that's how this, these things work. <laughs> she says, all right, well, I'll see you in court. And we think to ourselves, wow, this this has really been building up to this big custody hearing. I guess that's the big act three moment in this movie. The big, And mm -hmm. then we cut to that being over. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> My favorite bit of this entire fucking film. The, the, what we the, Literally at this point, the only stakes left in the film, his suicide, 
dealt with, not going to be an issue anymore. The only stakes left is who gets custody. And it's resolved in 15 seconds and six words of dialogue, which is the, the length of this custody scene resolved. It's yes. amazing. Yeah, no, that we cut immediately to a to a judge hitting a fucking gavel and going like, petition for 100% custody is denied. And we're like, off camera? Really, this all happened? <laughs> so weird. That is really fucking weird. And we see Monica storm off. We cut back to uh, Shane and Amanda, like sit at home watching birthday party videos of the whole family back when things were good and everybody was happy. Yep, two yeah. days ago, yes. Yeah, yeah from, right, from yeah, and they were all the, the same film. age. Yeah, they yep. had the same haircuts. Um, <laughs> so, and and mom walks in while they're watching it and Shane turns it off like they, she just caught him watching porn. Yeah, that is absolutely exactly what happens, yes. How dare you have happy memories? <laughs> <laughs> and Shane's like, you know, I, I love you, mom, but dad's not as bad as you say he is, so she slaps the fuck out of him. <laughs> <laughs> she does. And his face would be seriously red if he wasn't wearing so much fake tan. Yeah. Like yeah. Her, hand, her hand must come away orange. Clack. You can practically yeah. see powder flying through the air after the slap. <laughs> yeah. Like he was cleaning erasers. Yeah. Yeah. I expected a slow motion, like we see the helmet split open. Here at Claxo <laughs> Hair Helmets, you can see <laughs> the lives we've saved. Yeah, and, and but she's like, if you like your dad, then why don't you go live with him? And he's like, fine, I will. And he grabs his backpack and she kicks him out. She doesn't give him time to like put any stuff in his backpack. No. She takes his car keys and she sends him out with like, you know, his homework. So we get Shane arriving at dad's place now and being very excited to hang out with him at Heath's apartment. Awesome apartment, dad. I love how there's no distracting art on the walls or furniture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is, this is probably great for recording your podcast. <laughs> yeah. I wrote in my notes, you know, I feel bad about talking about Heath while he's not here. Oh, sorry, we weren't, we weren't talking about Heath. Oh, never mind. Then. <laughs> <laughs> so, and he's like, don't worry, I've got a pizza on the way. And I'm, I, I'm surprised he didn't say a Vito's trademark pizza on the way. <laughs> Vito, I mean, as long as there are no children that live in this building, Vinny will deliver it himself. <laughs> <laughs> His ankle bracelet, you understand. And he's like, do you he's like, do you want a sports bond together? He's like, sure do. The game's about to come on. The game's on in five minutes and this TV's not already on. You're missing all the build up. You don't know right? who the team's gonna the team sheet's gonna be. These are amateurs. Fucking idiots. Exactly. Mm. All right. So then we we cut back to Pastor John, but he's not on video anymore. He's in the fucking flesh because Raquel is back at church, baby. Oh yeah. Why? We don't know why. <laughs> no, we, we don't. Do, there's nothing, there's no reason for her to be back there. That that redemptive arc has not been resolved. No. And this is this is one of those amazing, like dumb fucking shit pastors say and pretend means something kind of moments. The pastor says, and I quote. God is closer than your own breath. He's where your pain and reality intersect. What? Yeah. Fucking what? reality intersects with all things and all the times in all the mm. locations. That, that's what reality is. Yep. What the fuck could that possibly mean? Anyway, I, just, I marveled at that for so fucking long, trying to parse meaning out of that dumbass sentence. It's pretty impressive, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, surely pain is where your pain and reality intersect. Yes! <laughs> so God is pain? What are you saying? <laughs> but the crowd loves it. They go fucking nuts. He gets a standing ovation from the 11 people in this fucking church. This tiny-ass little church. And it says the crowd loves it. We hear them absolutely loving it. We hear them going wild at one of his jokes. But then the, the cameraman makes the mistake of panning to the audience mm -hmm. who are in stony, dead face silence yes. while we hear them going wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So but at the end of the sermon, he gets a standing ovation or everybody just really has to pee. It's one of those <laughs> those two things. And then we head back to work where the boss comes in and says, hey, Raquel, would you believe we've got another walk in? Another walk in. Right. 
what do you mean another? The last walk-in was this entire movie ago. Right. How long does this movie think that was? What is the time period this movie thinks has elapsed between those two walk-ins? Whatever it is, it's long enough for like custody to be, res like custody hearings to resolve. Yeah. So probably years. Yep. <laughs> so, wow, we got another walk-in just like we did back in 2019. <laughs> what? So yeah, so but and, and I wrote in my notes like, oh, please tell me they're setting up a sequel. But no, it's Shane. He's come back in to tell her that things are okay and he's still not killed himself and uh and and now he's going off to college. Yeah. And I wrote I wanted to add also uh Amanda killed herself. Yeah, it turns <laughs> out leaving her alone and cut off in the grieved and manipulative narcissist was not a super great <laughs> oh, <yeah>. idea in <laughs> retrospect. <laughs> So, and to show you how prophetic Eli was, this is the point where I wrote in my notes, what was this movie about? Like, seriously, is this just some estranged dad writing a movie about what a piece of shit his ex is? So, yeah, I got there eventually. It just took me. It sure <laughs> is. I also love to, that Raquel tells Shane before he leaves, she's like, hey, by the way, you can call me anytime. And I'm like, I'll charge you money for it, of course. But yeah, I'll, I'll be on the clock, but I'm, I'm not denying you my service in future. Yes, yeah. you're not barred. Yes. And he's like, and, oh, there's this great line where he says, you know, you may never have become a nun, but you sure are an angel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've got nothing, yeah. Is he might as well say, you know, God is central to this movie, as is salsa. They sure <laughs> aren't just afterthoughts to make it marketable. <laughs> so. And speaking of which, okay, so now we have to close things off. So she, she goes back to Salsa Club, yeah, and we see her put that cross that she threw away at the beginning of the movie back on. She's back in with Jesus now. That's right. So she goes into the club, and damn it, if Matt. Divorced dad isn't there at the salsa club to salsa dance with her. Yeah, her therapy patients turned up at a salsa class, which is totally cool, apparently. She's not perturbed <laughs> by that yep. at all. At all. She's like, fun. Yeah. Let's hint at a romantic connection between us. Yes, right. And what I really wanted here was it to be a twist ending. And it turns out she's been dating him the entire time. She's been on his side the whole time. And they're both monsters who gaslit a woman and her child. That oh, would have been an amazing <laughs> twist. <laughs> I mean, I got news for you, Marsh. I got good news for you. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my God. And also, like, it pans back, and the judge is also at the salsa class. Yeah, the judge right, who awarded right. her the therapy <laughs> in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like the salsa class is some sort of like Freemasons. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, that might be the story behind the story. But the real story is that they just salsa the night away, and we wind up with credits. So, so to wrap things up, once more, I want to put you guys in charge of the marketing. What should the tagline for this movie be? Ooh, uh, God and Salsa, technically both in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, God and Salsa, because if you're not pandering to Hispanic Christians, you're just leaving money on the table. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> All right, well, I guess that's going to do it for our review of God and Salsa, but it's not going to do it for the episode just yet, because we still need to stumble back into this hole next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. We'll be watching Kids vs. Wizards, a Russian propaganda film about a series of Russian children who fight the evil anti-Christian children from Harry Potter universe. What? What? Yeah. Kids vs. Wizards. Okay. <laughs> all right. So with that great and amazing mystery to unravel next week. I guess we can bring episode 392 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Marsh for all his help. You should check the show notes for links to find some of his other stuff and a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among the ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Alias Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slott, with Dress on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm an illusions promise to work harder or another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. The fact that Matt's school never even bothered to investigate accusations about him sleeping with students continued to worry literally nobody for some reason. Right? 
some kid went on to find 24 fentanyl on a roof just looking like a bunch of discarded candy. (laughs) Raquel lost the shit out of her therapist's license. Right? I'm really going to have to carry this episode health wise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, which is not normally your no, thing. No, yeah. No visual migraines <laughs> no. for you today, Noah. Yeah. No kidding. I like the idea that we were snorting heroin. <laughs> <laughs> Just casually. Yeah. It's in our swag bag. <laughs> <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.